count. Yep. Go. Hello and welcome to Star Wars News and Weekly Comic Recap, presented by Tales from the Dark Side. This week, Marco's covering the new comic release, Star Wars Bounty Hunter 14. Uh, and he decides which was better, another look at Death Stick or finding out who she's working for. And he'll tell us why we're covering Star Wars Adventure 6 this week. Must be a good reason, and uh, we'll find out together. Because it's relevant. <laughs> Last week, we discussed one toy company's attempt to make their Star Wars lineup more kid-friendly. This week, it seems another company is trying to scare the bejesus out of kids. Any guess on that company? We'll tell you. <laughs> In JJ's Trap or Odds segment, was there a canon cameo this week or not? We'll give our opinions, and we're going to let you decide. You'll get a peek into the twisted workings of our brains as we rename some of Star Wars' most iconic ships. Some of the panel will examine the characters of the new High Republic novel, The Rising Storm. Some didn't read the book because it's got more than 36 pages and no pictures. <laughs> we'll review and talk about the latest episode of Rebels. I mean, Bad Batch. Well, kind of both, but mainly Rebels. Wow. It's episode 11, Devil's Deal. Let's get it going, guys. All right. Hey, uh, Solo dropped off at the last minute and Jen's running a little bit late, but hopefully they'll both be back on to join us this week. We've also got Leaky Trooper down there, Leaky, but we'll get our intros in a second. Uh, I will say this, just because you have to read words, sometimes you can put on a headset and listen to it because this panel, there's only one person who read the novel in this panel. One. It's still one. a commitment of time. I didn't one. have three hours. It took three hours and five minutes, guys. It's not it that long. Three hours for you to read it. It would take me like three weeks to actually read the book, like words. But the audio book still would have been like what 10, 15? Like it's fifteen. It's way kind of longer. Time. You guys are listening to that thing. It's way longer than it is to read the book. Just read the book. All right, Jedi, give us the <laughs> intros, man. Okay. Hey, after last week's discussion, he went and renamed his boat Marco's Watership. Now it's easier to find, no confusion. The only thing missing is a Lego logo. Give it up for Macho Man Marco. I do have a big M's. I do have big M's initialized on my on my boat. So I do know where my boat is. Uh, That's true. So he's not on the he's not on the screen right now, but this guy recommended that when we speak, we slowly rotate our chairs, whatnot style. No bidding, please. We're not for sale. <laughs> well, he might be, and he's a one of one solo Wookiee. We hope we'll be here. He'll be back. <laughs> That's what he said. Hey, he's a coin. He's like a coin-operated Star Wars fortune teller. Every Sunday, we insert a quarter, press a button, and we get our trapper odds question. <laughs> it's the guy behind the plexiglass, JJ Maxwell. <laughs> Hey, but Marco makes him get back the quarter. We are on a budget. <laughs> Very cheap budget. <laughs> hey, he was under the weather earlier this week, but the High Republic sock puppet lizard doctor prescribed him a <laughs> regimen of bantha bile and gungan stew. Yum. Now he's 100% again, and that means more videos. It's cheap <coughs> Renovision. <laughs> He got his nickname after accidentally discovering Darth Vader's true identity. It's Leaky Trooper. <laughs> it's a short intro, Leaky, but it's a pee yourself joke, so classic. <laughs> hey, after teaching this Jedi how to use force telepathy for communication, Master Yoda began getting called in the middle of the night asking, is your refrigerator running? Yep, that's me, Jedi Johnson 22. <laughs> go, guys. There you go. Another good one from Jedi Johnson. Hey, thanks to everybody in the chat. I know, hey, I know I wasn't there last week, but I did see everybody's. I read them all through. I appreciate it. There was one person in the chat. I gotta find out who it was. They 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 said that something I have I actually have to kind of question. They said uh when we were questioning the relevance of the Dane gear, saying that it wasn't a wasn't a uh interesting character, they kind of made a comment that we don't know. We don't think it's interesting because we don't know much about Star Wars, which is fair. I mean, that's a fair opinion, I guess. Yeah. 
I don't think I necessarily agree with that, but I actually would like to have them on or at least in the chat so we can ask them more like what we're missing because I'm definitely missing something in that character. I mean, I, I don't know how that works out. Leaky, I got another question for you. We're going to do pickups in a moment, but speaking of that, because I was just at a con the other day here in Michigan, Great Lakes started doing their series again, the Great Lake Comic Cons, but you were... Um, are you guys? Are you going to be at a Motor City Comic Con? Are you going to? Are you are the five hundred four? I the maybe. I'm. They're they're trying to get me to go. They can't get any TKs, any five hundred four TKs. So I I might actually uh, come back from uh, up north just to attend a day. So I might be there. Oh, cool. Well, let us know, and I'll, I'll let everybody else there know that just in case they're at Motor City Comic Con, which is in October, they can show up for that. Uh, all right. So who's got pickups today? We've got. Uh, oh, and Dave in the UK. I'm curmudgeon. Just get it right, man. I, just to, I'm no Sheldon here. I'm not just some swat, smarty little guy that just uh, tries to ruin everybody's day by using facts. I'm a curmudgeon. Thank you. Uh, Jedi, what do we got? Uh, okay. So, obviously, I think most people, hopefully, got the uh, whoops, got this one. This was hard to come by, at least at the comic book stores I went to. I uh, almost had, had a one copy only. And, hey, guess what else I was able to get? I was surprised. That this was oh, available nice. at ratio uh, this a week after being released, right? So yeah, eh, I was surprised. The Momoka, uh, yep. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, this is gonna be huge. It's a lucky oh, charms, Momoka. <laughs> yep. Hey, also, uh, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at me this way. This you're gonna laugh at me about this, but I hope our buddy Dom Tober is watching. I found a Funko store nearby. I didn't know it was there. Went in and got these two bobos. Uh, I know Dom's already got them because he showed them off when he was on, but I picked these up. For, oh, nice. Was a good, hope these were a good price. And uh, the guy liked me so much because I'm a likable guy. Uh, he gave me a couple of freebies. So I picked up, or he gave me, I guess, two free Kira Funkos, which maybe will pay dividends in the future. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. That's what I got this week, though. Hmm. Nice. That is cool. JJ, let me put you into the main spot. All right. Sir. All right. So I didn't have very many pickups this week because uh, these were expensive pickups. But so first up, I got to oh, get those Dark Horse yeah. variants. Nice. So pick this guy up. Yep. There you uh, go. There, there may be a Jedi Johnson like story involved in that later. We'll see. Can you talk <laughs> about what that is? Just don't hold it up so Love people it. can hear what you're I don't know about. if anybody will be able to see it. But uh, yeah, due to uh, poor shipping practices on a guy that is quote unquote only shipped a comic once, you got a gigantic corner ding right here. Oh. No, but it's a sketch. It's a sketch for Darth. It's a sketch for Darth Maul. Yeah. It's only a Jedi yeah. equation. Oh, if you yeah. Drop yeah, it's the Wizard World. Yeah. The Wizard World, the uh, son of Dathomir. Uh, yes. Yeah. So Dathomir. these were only five hundred, I believe, mm -hmm. made. And then, of course, this is the, this one I like better. I do like the, I do son like, of I like the color better. Too. Darth like Maul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. A thousand of these guys, and then uh, I got me a couple slabs of Dark Horse variants. So picked them up cheap off eBay in auctions. So. Got the Midtown, the Lucas Draft number yep. one Midtown version, and then the Lucas Draft number one. If I can actually pick it up, Dom says awesome pickups, Jedi. Yep, Frizen. Thank you, Dom. Appreciate that. So oh, nice, nice Jenny. Frizen, yeah. yeah, nice Jenny Frizen Star Wars. Oh, Jenny Frizen Star Wars. This was a yeah. yeah Forbidden Planet exclusive of mm, the Lucas Draft. So, little yeah. Jenny, little Jenny. Yeah. Uh, Solo will be back. Uh, Comic Barbarian, what's going on? Uh, that's our man. Uh, I got to say hi to everybody else. Shannon, how you doing? We got VKs in the house, Empire Comics. Ruben, nice to see you. And he's congratulating JJ on some picks. Dom hit me up in the personal messages to say, Jedi, you did an excellent job on that. Bravo Comics, good to see you, sir. I hear sir is your dad, so you're not sir, but either way. Uh, who else we got? Of course, we got Astro in there and Stick Boy. What is going on? We won't be covering Visions this week, Ruben. Ruben asked that question. We'll be covering it next week just because we got so much stuff to cover. We actually were going to cut this. We've got so much stuff backed up that this was going to be a three and a half hour show. And we just keep <laughs> pushing stuff to the next week because we can't cover it all. Yeah, so sorry. let's. Uh, for three and a half hours. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's what you said. Jedi said he can't take us for three and a half hours. I'm not even going to do pickups. Is anybody else going to do pickups? I not. think we're just going to get into it. Yes, yeah, good. Okay. Do it. So let's just get into it. We're going to start off with. Uh, the recap of the comic book stuff. We're going to add in a little, a little new toy, a new little black series. That is, um, <clears throat> I want to hear everybody's opinion on this piece. Uh, then from there, we're going to go to it's a trap after it's a trap. We're going to do the renaming of ships. Then we're going to cover novels. Then we're going to cover, uh, our opinion, brief opinion. We're not going to spoil the whole book. Okay. We, we want you guys to all get into it. We might do a little bit deeper into it later, but we're going to 
we're going to talk a little bit about the novel and then, of course, get into Bad Batch or Rebels, as the boys have been calling it all week long, um, which I don't think is fair. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this week's Star Wars show recap. Let's hit the slides and see what we got. Ooh, we've already started off good. Okay, so... Um, the two books that came out this week were War of Bounty Hunters and Star Wars Adventures, Tales of Villainy. Uh, this is the book that had Tika uh, on the front cover. It actually had a big link to the novel. So if you read the novel, um, the, a lot of the stuff that happens in here kind of links over, which is kind of cool. I actually like that they're doing it. These, uh, oops, that's the covers for Adventures. We're going to start off first. Jedi refuses to go into the kitty section. I think that's because they don't allow him there, but whatever. So he couldn't pick these books up, but the rest of us got it. It starts off um, with Dr. Uttersand. Uttersand, I was asking um, because Solo, he's not here, but I think he said Uttersand's how they say it. I think that's what he said. Mm -hmm. In the book, because this character actually does show up in the novel. Uh, And this is the doctor, and he's like this psychopathic doctor that kind of just does a lot of stuff. to take. He keeps... Santika alive, uh, Maria Santika, who's the one who comes with up with the past. This is the first time you see her. I actually have to say, if you put her on the cover, she's got enough speaking and it refers to who she is. And she's like almost the entire page. I'm just going to go ahead and say this is her first appearance, which it probably is. Same with him. Uh, he's on a couple different pages, so we'll see him. They also have all these new co- characters like uh, Zurak, Ordor, Grank. It doesn't work out too well for him. And Beto. I think if you're reading... The interesting part is like uh, if you read the novels, you kind of see where some of the stuff might be going with this. But these guys are pretty much Marshan Rose personal like crew. They're not storm chasers. They're not clouds. They're not tempests. You know, they just are like his personal um, click, I guess you'd say. Uh, the story is pretty corny, pretty funny. I do like the fact that the Gamorian throws the little guy right here. Right? <laughs> it was dumb. It's a dumb book, but it's kind of funny, dude. He goes bowling with them because they got to get over to the bridge because there's an invasion about to come in. They end up finding this little creature, start eating people, including the Gamorrean guard. So he's down one and it doesn't matter because the whole thing, the whole comm system works in the end. The most important part about the book pretty much is the appearances that you get there. And it was actually pretty fun for these adventure stories, which the rest of them are terrible. I didn't even have the, gall to make you suffer through <laughs> the first half of the book which is pretty wow. much an anakin it's bad yeah. but it's another really anakin that character there look at that how often do they do an anakin and padme story in this series i, I think this like is like part five of like every a book 20 part story yeah i think this is part five of a 20 part story it's supposed to be villainy too so it's it just, uh, it, it was dumb I don't these like are it. a little bit slapsticky um i don't know the the verbiage i think is a little strong for for the youth like, I don't know who they're really targeting with this. I actually would say that Adventures, the um, High Republic series, is better at it than this one. But it's written by the same guy, so who knows? Um, who knows at all? I was trying to see who keeps popping in and keeps falling out. It's, it's solo wookie. All right, so that is the first part of that. Then we get two death sticks. You know, we had her do her little cool. cameo first and the last thing. She could do it again. This actually yellow cover was kind of harder to find than I thought. I think people are starting to um, not order extras for some reason. The LCSs are going back to that where like we have too many copies, but they usually have too many copies of the A covers or whatever. On this one, they ordered a ton of A. They didn't have a lot of the B covers, which is stinks because that yellow actually turns out. I always like yellow covers. Yeah, it looks you good. get back, you get back in, you get these two. Um, our man Cyborg is almost dead. Because his heart got stopped by death sticks the last time when we first saw her. <laughs> so Valance is having problems. And Dang uh Dangier is like uh Dangar? Dangar is like a, yeah, I keep because I keep saying Dangier for the pet things. The, that's all we talked about. Plant yeah. Things. yeah, that's all we talked about earlier. You get a little bit of a either way. At the bottom, you get a little bit of her in the shadows. You get uh, what's his name helping him up the stairs. He goes to knock on a door, and then we get this guy lady. I thought this was a guy at first. But it's not. It's a woman because her name is Mama Stu Mooch. The Mooch. You know, this is a funny thing. This is this is a thing that Jedi kind of brought up, and I think he was dead up, dead on right about it. He's like, you know, especially the High Republic with them coming up all these characters lately. Like, maybe some of the names shouldn't be like maybe maybe we should just like calm down with how creative we're getting with some of these. Now, names, right? now you guys know He Man better than me, but does the dude on the left? Not look like a He-Man villain. Oh, you're talking about the guy oh. who ro- the eyes roll around. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the, actually, you're right. So this guy on the right. Like 
Yeah, there's two there's two He Man villains on this. As a matter of fact, the guy to the red yeah. and the guy to the right. The one looks um, like Shredder. Yeah, yeah, kind of Shredder, but the inside mouth tongue thing doesn't that look like the? There's that one character that. Can... Well, either way, it would be nice if they went back to like He Man style, naming people like Han Solo and. You know, even Chewbacca is easier than this, or Luke, or something like that. Skywalker. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, how simple do you want it? You don't want it just to be like, oh, this is Fred, and this is George, <laughs> Joe Smith. Well, the problem with it is, is Mama Stumuch is probably not pronounced Stumuch. It's probably like Stum, mm-hmm. like Mar Mar Ro, the character Ro. How they have changed it from Marshall to like now it's Misha Is what? What is that? I don't even know. Like. In the I audience, it. it was just Marsha. It was like Marsha and Roe. It's Marcia. not Marsha and Roe. No, not it. Yeah, but it might have been in the first one. But now I think from what I heard, they had changed it in the second one. And definitely if you listen to the like any of the star official Star Wars people, you know, the ones they actually pay to review their crap. Um, they show. Why listen to the audio book? Isn't that official Star Wars people? They hired them to read the book. Not like I, re- I had a bootleg audio book. No, no, no I'm talking about like, I'm ta- they, so there is one woman who's supposed to be like the, I, I don't know, it's on the StarWars.com. I actually, They okay. have these videos that play every once in a while. I was like, who the hell are they talking about? So I went back because, you know, it just plays after other stuff in your in your thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I was like, are they saying Marshan? And they're like, no, it, it, it was him. Even Kevin Scott doesn't pronounce it that way anymore. So like, well, he's British. He doesn't, he doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't count. Well, regardless, everyone's going to pronounce pronounce her mama's stomach. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how I pronounced it when I saw it. <laughs> Either way, bit we get a little bit back. This was kind of good. The bid for two, like you get a little bit of an extra um, bonus thing. I actually really enjoy this book. I think Bounty Hunters is one that's been solid sometimes with like sprinkled with greatness in it. And this is one where it was sprinkled with the greatness that they have. It turns out that he has a, uh, that, um, um, danger. Say it. Somebody. Dangar. 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 Dangar has a girlfriend. Uh, this is actually from legacy. Like I don't, I think so. They might be pulling this back, but it also is part of like video games and like tabletop stuff too. He eventually had a girlfriend at one time and it looks like he has a girlfriend again. Who's caught by Boba? A vet in, in the old school one. She was uh, what the heck happened to her? She's in a book. It was one of those Java books, and if I remember correctly, like some guy ate her in his belly because she was in like uh, the Tatooine bar, but he didn't actually eat her. It's like a prison in his belly, and then he like bursts her out to Java, and she becomes one of Java slaves. I don't think they're going to do that in this one. Either way, her name is. Yeah. Manaru and that's his girlfriend and it gets him really mad. She, th- I put punishing one because I know we're covering ships and this is one we're probably not going to cover, but this is actually his ship and she was in charge of guarding it. And that's how in this new storyline, she pretty much got pulled out in the current timeline. There is a pretty important picture, I guess, in here, something that got people's feathers in the rough and we will hit this up a little bit later. <laughs> but when Mama Stumu is talking about like all the old things, they start talking about the Crimson Dawn. Once again, that's how all these books are. They're trying to get everything linked up to the Crimson Guard. This is how they're going to get these two to the Crimson Guard. Um, also that it all in, it, it injects uh, death sticks. But they talk about uh, the Death Watch here and when it was first assembled. I blew up the picture of the Shadow Collective. We will talk about it later, I hope. Uh, I think we will in the Black Sun. The next page then has the rest of it, the Voss stuff, the stuff, all the... Uh, the Pretty much all the stuff from the solo movie and the stuff from the Clone Wars when it was the Mandalorians were seizing Mandalore with which there's characters back there that look like other people. I'm not gonna get into that here either. Yeah. Um either way, Mama Stuku is Stumuku, whatever her name is, <laughs> is really scared when she hears about the death stick thing because she's like, Oh my gosh, what have you done? She's gonna kill us all. I will tell you this. Like, this is cool, right? Cool like she's battle. got these. But I don't know why she's got these little droid things that battle up. I'd rather see her just go complete ninja style, right? The the she's got the one uh, katana in the back of the dude. The other one's coming. She's got the little devil eyes that look dope, and then she's doing the little trick. The pew pew pew. They had a lot of pews going on. <laughs> a lot of pews going on in pew, both pew, books. Pew. This, uh, both books this week. Uh, either way, so they decide that they're going to get out by blowing a hole in the wall and taking a ship out, which why wouldn't you with the thermal detonator? I thought that was kind of cool. They thermal detonated out. They get into the ship. More pew, 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 and some <laughs> choo-choos there, which I don't There's know. Some tunes. You need some tunes. Yeah. The powerful lasers, man. When you got Chooms, tunes. <laughs> so eventually the ship's crashing, and both 
bounty hunters get thrown out. Uh, Valance ends up saving him, and he didn't have to. So Dang Gear is like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do that all. Dangar, Dangar, yeah, Dangar is like, you didn't have to save me. I could have died, but they're really being spied on by Death Sticks, and then they go, oh yeah, there you go. This is your pops right there at the bottom. <sighs> Kyra, Kira is saying like, hey, don't kill him yet because I have plans for him. So we'll see what happens, and that's how they're all gonna go. So hopefully now we are all at the auction in the next round of these books, which I think we will be. Um, those pops just hey, can you can you go back to that real quick? I had a question about Death Sticks here. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the comic, I thought that was a female character. It is. So it is. When I see the eyes here, this is where he really looks like Shredder, and it's yeah. a she. But look at that. Look at the face. I was like, mm -hmm. what are they doing? Yeah. It looks like Shadow Knight. Yeah, that's what I was kind of saying. Like, It kind of would have been cool because she's supposed to be related to a Knight Sister. And I thought this was kind of like more of the style yeah. that would be cool yeah. and maybe see a little bit more of her power. We didn't get to see a lot of her, really. Like, we got to see no. her put the katana in somebody's back. But, like, really, her little bomb ships here are doing all the pew pewing. She's just kind of jumping in the air. Yeah. And they easily got away by using a, a detonator to get away. Now, remember, they're doing the two story thing here, too. So I didn't want to, um, I want to go through that portion first. They splinter it in. They're doing the story where, um, the two girlfriends are, are going back and because of the kid that's supposed to be taking over for the world and they end up fighting the actual Crimson Dawn. You get to see some good fighting. I did find it funny that she whistles and then she's got the beast that comes through. This actually might be a good three, threesome. Well, I mean like trio. Couples. <laughs> trio. Thank trio. you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Trio. <laughs> this actually Less starts implications if you just say trio. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I did think it was a little corny when they're like, oh, the wife comes over and starts shooting him. And he goes, that's a good wife. Uh, you should keep her. And he's like, yeah, I get I get a little bit of the courting lining in there. But oh, to be man. honest with you, seeing them show up and having their little pit pet is going to be pretty fun, I think. It just throws in a different curve. Altogether, the book was pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. Next one, and I think it's in next... This is Oh, this is next week's book. Next okay, week's there book. we got another Dr. Afra, which we haven't canceled yet. Boba Fett apparently is going to show up in this book, and they're going to run into each other. So it should be pretty decent. Um, what else is next week? War Bounty Hunter, we're getting the big one, the the, the boss redo. Um, I'm actually just big... look unfinished. Hmm? The headshots, the 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 B covers, I guess they just I know with really? the solid colored backgrounds, but they did I look... like. Did you see them this week? Finished. Yes, but did you see them? Okay, this one they look better in person. Yeah, this one. Yeah. I mean, Doctor Afra and what they do with her, they need to stop. I mean, it's it's getting to a point where it's just stupid, okay? I think it's just that the trade dress is like a third of the cut. It's like so obtrusive. This uh, War of the Bounty Hunters and then the title. Like, right. That wasn't I, there, it but might I, was be a nice I was actually disappointed that I only got two of the um, the yellow covers, the ones this the week. The balance? It, yeah, the balance, because it actually looks like like JJ said, it looks way better. I I, I would I, I obviously can't see chat right now, but I'm wondering what chat thinks about it. it, it if they got it in person, I think it looks way better in person than it does in... Um, Ruben uh, likes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruben yeah. likes it. Yeah, good. Hey, everyone. Hey, what's up, that guy? But yeah, I mean, I like him a lot. I just don't like what they do with... Ar like, can we get... Like, every character's got a certain style that no matter who the artist is, like Bubble Fett, there's certain things you have to do with Bubble Fett. Han Solo is the same way. Certain ways, certain features you have to. Y you can pretty much draw... If, as long as you give her dark hair... You can pretty much draw Dr. Afra however the bleep you want. You can do whatever the bleep you want with her. And it's oh, like, yeah. it's a, but they, I mean, like, the, there's no more opposite drawing. And it's not just the stylization. It's just like, I, I don't like it either way. I just um, think it's inconsistent. It's, yeah, it, like, it is. You, you lose track of who she is. You know, it's absolutely, absolutely. Well, a good point. Like, Pete was making and you are making right there. I mean, how come they can't break the Dr. Afra? you know, title across the top and stop taking up so much of it. Like make, do something with Afra up in there. And like, we know who it is. Like we're well, far enough along here. We know who it is. This is, this is because it's all the, they, that's the, that's just what they're doing with the war and bounty hunter time. I know, but since it's a B cover, they have the, you know, they have the carte blanche. They could do it differently. They could have just made it a straight, like near virgin cover. And I think it would have, uh, they, 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 could break, they can break that line a little bit. Like right here, the Boba Fett, I mean, he's, his, yeah, I mean, you still know that it says War of the Bounty. Hey, it's the same art. Yeah, that different. art, but that artist could do this. Is what this is what I annoys find. me. It's the exact same artist. So somehow that artist can do Boba Fett without like completely changing around the stylization of Boba Fett. So you can recognize that's Boba Fett. If you did it, look, I'm telling you this. If you didn't have the title on this, if you didn't have Marvel. Let's you just cut this picture out randomly. Cut 
cut it out over here on the blue cover, and you put yeah. that random picture up there, just maybe even took off the goggles, you would. There's no way in shit you would know that's Doctor. Well, Adler. you do because it has the goggles. That's how I know you got the, the goggles. Yeah, the goggles and the. This is what cap. we're doing now. So now it's the goggles. That's all, Doctor. Doctor Afra's any. Uh, chick that's got black hair and goggles. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, have a consistent art. No, it's, 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 it's Star Wars. Wars. Nobody, nobody changes clothes in Star Wars. Cool. It looks yeah, a lot more like, it looks a lot more like Doctor Afra than that. That's he's got a point. He was. Well, if you guys saw Doctor Afra in Bespin fatigues, she would look much better. Yeah. What were you say? Jesus. What were you say? say this, this looks more like Doctor Afra than that one in twenty five. Agreed. The one where she's like looks like a Barbie doll on the the, the speeder. Yeah, the, uh, I forget, oh, I forget the, the name of the artist. It? No, though, uh, that, we're, that we're might talking get about upset. it in. Uh, I forget. I forget who it was. We we're talking about it on IG a little bit this week. Uh, looks nothing like Doc <laughs> Afra, and I'm sorry if I'm stealing this person's thunder. I just can't remember right now who it was. Uh, but yeah, they they're all over the place with Doc <laughs> Afra. Well, one of the one of the issues I had. What I call is, it? What I, I did call her a lady. <laughs> Well, one of the, the issues I have is they change her facial structure. Yes, right? that's the yeah. biggest issue I have. Like sometimes I, she has a long oval face, sometimes yes. she has narrow eyes, sometimes she has bigger. Yeah, her nose is different. It's like, it, it doesn't even look like the same. Person. I don't even like the color on this one's off. Like she looks like she has jaundice or something. I don't know. She, <laughs> she's a changeling. You heard it here first. She's a changeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, there's there's like, for some reason, they decide to put purple shading. Like, yeah, uh, that's between I mean, yeah. her eyes. Yeah. Like, it's not... Those are bruises. <laughs> okay. She was up late. Not enough of that. So also we've got the actual key. It's the second part. It's number two to the actual main storyline to War of the Bounty Hunters. FOC, dude, we're finally getting, I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen it, but we're actually finally getting all the wanted covers, which I don't want to buy them, but I'm going to. Um, I like them. Some of them, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't want to like them. Bad. I didn't want to like them. But I'm, I like it's it. better than the Spider Man kiss cover you got there for the first one where they're up. You don't, know, I, I love that cover. I think that cover, you, like, no, you like the upside it. down? I don't get it. No, no I, I'm with uh, I'm with Solo on this one. I like that one. Yeah, I'm with the first two covers. I was, I'm probably gonna pass on the third cover. Oh, yeah, third cover, I don't like it. It's well, that's the regular it's like a Rick and Morty cover. <laughs> we also got, we also got <laughs> FOC. We've got, gosh, Jesus, Body Hunters 15. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna grab a couple of these. Who's I actually. That? No, it's fun. Gonna, leave it on that one. Well, I was gonna ask who's the, the cover artist for the A cover on that for Bounty oh, Hunter. I don't know. Yeah, it I looks know. like a it looks like a it's, Vader's castle cover. One? It does, it does. It does. <laughs> no, yeah, I repeat, it's yeah, like Rick and Morty. <laughs> Which yeah, is good though to see that they're gonna keep Death Six around though, because usually they get rid of characters in Star Wars after two books. Cameo yeah, for the other ones are Nakayama, right? Yeah, Nakayama's mm -hmm. the wanted ones, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. what's up with uh, Dengar's face there? He's like, surprise! Oh, you got me! I think <laughs> it's the same good. artist that did Vader's castle. At least yeah. I like it. You guys they remember when like... the faces melted at the end of Raiders Lost Ark? That's exactly yeah. They both look is. like zombies, really. They do. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, I never saw it coming. No, I think they're just worried they're both going to get their prostate exams, and they're shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Valance is Doctor Strange over there with his yeah. hand going. You know what's funny is I think I think he did a better job with the wand and for Valance than he did. I like how like it kind of shines off of the. Mm -hmm. um... In all fairness, if Electra Shredder was coming at me, that's the look I'd have on my face. <laughs> I, I do kind of wish they'd a trade dress that up and down uh, Forlom and Zuckus. I wish they'd a trade dress both the top and the bottom, because then mm. you could have twisted it either way. Oh, upside down you know on the first, one. yeah, like the B cover. Card. Yeah, that yeah, would have been like yeah, like a playing card. No, the A cover. They, that's not the A cover, dude. That's the B cover. B. It goes B. Oh, it's not very. It goes well, B yeah. ratio. Yeah, yeah, because I like it the best B ratio mm. A. Uh, just like this one is ratio and A. I think it's ratio. Are those going to be ratio? Does anybody know? Are they ratio? I thought they were just no, uh, no, no. They're, they're not. So C, yeah, whatever. Their order, pretty, awesome, good. Yeah, like the and this is so they right, also right. released an FOC. Um, this is just getting on my bleeping nerves. They're they're not good anymore. They released an FOC um, insider cover. This is it. Mm -hmm. And I think the conversation I, we had in the group chat went something like this. You know, remember when they had Rebels out like. You had Rebel covers that are kind of cool. And they had special characters from Rebels yeah. as the PX cover or something like that. Right now... We have uh, Bad Batch. Yeah, we have Bad Batch and there's no Bad Batch covers. There's like zero Bad Batch covers. 
There's yep. zero, like, even do something with the High Republic covers that are cool. They did one High Republic cover, that's it. You know what I mean? We get, I, I get it. I get it. But, like, at the same point, I get they, one more baby Yoda, Yoda cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, they, I swear. Baby Yoda covers, and then now, Obi. They've, okay. they've used this image before on mm -hmm. a magazine of some sort, I swear. I know I've seen it. But that's what I'm saying. It seems like they're just reusing like this. Yeah. This the other covers with this. I should have pulled it. Kylo Ren. They fuck. They put Kylo Ren on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just his nose. But they got him. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, all those does anybody have anything? This. I mean, the relevance of Kylo Ren this week. Because, I mean, could somebody explain it to me? I don't. Mike, anybody? Hey, Mike, what's going on? By the way. Sorry, I was late. We have power outages happening here in Tennessee. Sorry about that. I no thought worries. you were still away. Yeah, yeah. Pete said you're still on vacation, so we didn't even say you were coming. We we're like, hey. <laughs> I just uh, got back. I just got back. Cool. Uh, no, I mean, I just, it just, it's very disappointing. It is, and I think everybody out there, yeah. Thank you, Sanker Jai Text. I think that's perfectly it. It's very disappointing, and the fact that we, you know, they they kind of teed us up with some great covers last year on Insider, and then all of a sudden. This is what they give us. It's like okay, and then I know it, no reason why Kylo Ren should be relevant at the moment or Kylo, ever again. Kylo <laughs> Ren is on the PX cover, so this is the FOC cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, the FOC covers are just being ridiculous too. I, I mean, I did like the Ahsoka card variant. Wasn't yeah, bad. the Ahsoka card good. variant was cool, but the relevance of that at the time is a little past too. Yeah, but I mean, it's so rare it, yeah. they don't put her on a ton. But like this, I don't know. You could have held off on this, or I don't know. Either way. So I think I'm going to maybe they're uh, like us. They're just backed up on like covers. So they're just kind of pushing them out when they can. So that's why yeah, we're going to hit up yeah. visions in a, you know, next week. I just, I just hope the subscriber cover is good. It's my only hope. See what I did. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Jesus. Bad jokes are <laughs> over. <laughs> See, <laughs> bad joke. Is the sub, we is the sub it. cover, isn't this going to, isn't the sub cover going to be the version Kylo Ren cover? This, this month it sometimes is and sometimes is a totally I think it cover. is. I think you're getting virgin Kylo Ren cover. So good luck. <laughs> uh, lame. Oh, awesome. Cool stuff. Right, you're uh, never Marco, you are never allowed to say those two words in the same sentence ever again. Well, Kylo Ren <laughs> is Kylo. Kylo. Oh wait, I, can't we get bad for calling people virgins? I don't know. Uh, Either way. Oh Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, this is what we were talking about in Jedi's Kevin intro. Wolf. Yeah, is it or is it the yellow man from Sin City? Because it no, is just Pollock. Oh, oh my Freddy Krueger, young Freddy Krueger, <laughs> bro. What? Like, look at him on the corner, looking okay, dapper at least. The dude, how? I I'd love to have a black series figure, but if they make my face look like that, I'm passing, bro. Why did he come with the, with the cowboy hat? hat. Yeah. yeah, it needs yes. that. It needs that. For the, yes. for the uninitiated, know, dude. For the uninitiated, <laughs> we should say that the character is Trapper Wolf, and he was. Yes. Played shortly by Dave Filoni. Yes, so it's Dave. It is Dave. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, Dave. it's supposed to be Dave. And like, yeah. um, I mean, it's oh, not dude. so bad. This is a up close picture of it. It's not as terrible as what it looks like in the. It's pretty he terrible. Comes with, he comes with the rifle, though. Yes. He does. He comes with the rifle. And you yep. can put the hat on to try to make him not look as bad. <laughs> it's going to be twenty nine ninety nine. everybody. It's $30. I was going to say, when they mo cap this, did they just awesome. do it with, when a picture with him with the helmet on? Because the. Yeah, the it doesn't look anything like him. The be, yeah. the best is like they actually know what he looks like because he's on yeah. the side of the box looking like him, and they're yeah. supposed to have like this is it. If your selling point is doing uh you know face scans, they you ain't selling me on this one because everybody <laughs> yeah, knows what this dude looks like. He don't look like that. <laughs> your computer's broke, bro. Like mine's bad. Yours is worse. If you're doing, did you catch him while he had a mouthful of marshmallows? Like his face are <laughs> yeah, his eye, yeah, his cheeks are up. Is like this isn't a good look. I want. I would love to hear. Yeah, pass. I'd love lots to hear. Not to though. cross contaminate, but they just released that Scarlet Witch figure that is dead on. Right. Perfect, yeah. Elizabeth Olsen. I mean, it is like perfect. Well, they can get it right, but so they, they can get it do. right. They just need to care. It's but, yeah, <laughs> look, hey, look, look. They don't even know who it's supposed to be. They're like, is that really him? And they you know, I mean, it's exactly him. what. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's fun. Maybe, uh, they gave him Ed Asner's nose. His nose doesn't look anything <laughs> like that. I guys, I yeah. I mean, I hate it. I mean, I guess you got to be happy. You got a we figure should, made. Of we you, should have but... mentioned also that it's a PulseCon exclusive. So that's true. You it's can totally match. avoid it if you want to. It's not in shops or anything. So. Yeah, it's like going to be a peg, peg warmer forever. Like you'll see every day. Bartles, you Bartles, and, at you. Bartles and James hitting another one out of the park. 
<laughs> hard, yeah. well, no, hard it's, shots on this one. And it's yeah. probably a kit, it's probably a kit bash. That's probably a Luke body. Yeah, so. yeah, it probably no, it didn't. No, no, you know what it was? Yeah, it's it, who they just released. What was the pilot that the X Wing pilot they it just released? Oh, was it? It's hundred percent his, not Wedge. No, 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 no. Oh, it, it was, the other the, the Yeah, other the older guy. The blue the green and white from like oh, uh, Green yeah. Squadron or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they just repainted it orange. They just repainted it orange. It's literally the same kit. Like yeah. exactly down to the rifle. Yeah. And they just put his head they put a head on it. I mean, dude, somebody's gotta have come up with a custom head that looks more like Dave. But like well, it, it would have been way cooler if they did give him a cowboy hat. It, and it they, would. you know, and to yeah, take away so. the yeah. rifle, keep the rifle, give him the cowboy hat. It well, would have been too. Way give better. him a helmet and the cowboy hat. No, I would have yeah, yeah. considered yeah. it for a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, you know what? They should have at least given him Cad Bane's hat. That would have been. There you go. There you go. I mean, it's gonna sell out, obviously, but like at the same point, like it shouldn't. Um, and I feel bad, like for everybody that tells us that Dave's in charge of everything and he's the king of Star Wars. Well, if he was, his face wouldn't look like that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he did not have approval on this figure. There's James, no James, yeah, thing. James did not give him any. I can't wait till we get our next Pulse announcement, like the video, and James gets up there and has to explain <laughs> this. To tell you how great it is. <laughs> Has to explain. He's what he like. Bartles is just some dip around, you know. Whatever. James is the one that designs these things. Like the assistant, the the guy that actually puts this Bart- into the press. Bartles is gonna suddenly be gone. James yeah. is gonna blame it on him. Yeah. Yep. Bartles. We should it. see if this is one of their faces. Bartles will James. He's like, Bartles will be like, ah, Bartles okayed it. James, you're the one that makes these things. Yeah, but Bartles okayed it, so he's gone. This, this reminds me of the Lionel Richie video. Hello. Oh, with the head there, he carved the blind. Yeah. He carved the yeah. head. That's pretty much what it looks like. Yeah, I was yeah, waiting for the back. I was like, "What?" Yeah, there's a backstory to that video that he was extremely mad. Lionel Richie lost it because it looked nothing like him. He was. I, mad. I don't know if he's Lionel Richie is usually pretty low key. Yeah, yeah. I, I, whatever drugs he's on, I want to be on them too, man. He's usually pretty happy. Either way, uh, yeah, he's easy uh, like Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 Hey, Mark, All right, so this is gonna do it in um, pickups. But since this is a toy update, I have a quick thirty-second Lego toy update. But, okay, um, I'm pulling this down, and I'll put you up in the main. Hey, okay. please this also is... to uh, please also to make sure you check the link below for Lou Ulbricks and his newest show. Give him a thumbs up and everything else. So Go this ahead, is your last chance. They're on clearance now. You can get the Anakin Jedi Interceptor, the 501st set, and most importantly, Ahsoka Tano's Battle Tank. Oh, on clearance, yeah. Oh, they're all uh, going out of, they're going to be gone by August. So you, if you haven't got them yet, pick them up now. And don't, you know, don't let them fool you. It says clearance. It's the exact same price you can get everywhere. It's, there's no, Lego is like uh, Bose or uh, Sony or anything. There's no, uh, yep, this is the, the clear out season for Legos. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're yeah. clearing out to make the new stuff in. Good call. Yep. Thanks for bringing that up. Nice. I've been at Myers too, by the way. <laughs> Myers, <laughs> yeah. Myers, yeah. The Myers, t- the Myers clearance uh, section. Uh, all right. Comic review is for those that don't know. Myers is a store that only Lucky Michiganders have. <laughs> I was gonna say, and parts of Ohio. Ohio. We do not have them yeah. here. We got them in Indiana, Indiana here. Yeah, Indiana got some. Yeah, yeah, Indiana's close enough. You're all you're all mid in the Midwest. Midwest there, right? You guys can have them. You guys got to stop mm-hmm. filling up the chat with stuff that isn't the order of which I'm to do stuff because then I'm really behind. All right, share <laughs> the screen for It's a Trap. Speaking we were working that. through technical difficulties earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, where is It's a Trap? Who's got It's a Trap? Cool. Nobody? Sweet. You do. Oh, uh, sweet. All right, cool. We so are pro right here on sure. Tales from the Dark Side. Let me pull up It's a Trap. <laughs> I thought you yeah, had everything. Probably. You talked about it before we started. I was like, no, I started was doing indecent things in the chat room. Mm-hmm. Me. Did you set? Where'd you send? It's a trap this week. All I got is, me? yeah. I thought I shared it to you. Okay, you try to redo that, and instead we'll go into go. ships. Let's go into ships. Yeah, go into ships. I'll get it ready. I'll, I'll get get it ready, ready, please, and I will yeah. throw in ships real quickly. Jedi, are you ready for ships? <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. I know, right? Sure, man. Let's show everybody what we uncovered. Uh, yeah. Uh, for all those people that are waiting for the ship names, we have a list of ship names. This came directly from the desk of the Catherine Kennedy. So, no, it didn't. It really didn't. No. It really didn't. Uh, it really no, didn't. I'll say that. But we, no, we, we were trolling we last sued. week, Mike, about it and like how everybody was blaming her for this, which is just not her thing. I don't think she even knows what the name of 
the ship would be and what it wouldn't. So, but some people got really upset about it. <laughs> Klingon yeah. bird of prey. <laughs> right. So then I got really upset about it and he threatened to actually come up with the ship names and he came. So he went over to Disney oh, yeah, Studios. I mean, Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm just uh, yeah. So I said, hey, if we're uh if they're gonna rename Slave One, uh let's dig into this and see if there was ever any other names considered for any of the other ships <laughs> yeah. that we might see in the future. Because you know, we gotta make things easier and more more consumer friendly, friendly. millennial yeah, so let's, go, let's go to the first one <laughs> sorry so here we see slave one and you can read she was you can read what she was and uh you know she was slave one but the updated designation we learned was fets unconventional fets unconventional capture kill ship and if that's too hard to remember just use the acronym <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Very good, very classy. <laughs> That's why we're almost at the hour mark, so we could get that joke off. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, one. so yeah, then we have uh, yeah we have the Millennium Falcon. There's her class. Read it yourself. Uh, we updated that kind of last week to Han's home, but we also found out it could also be Lando's landing pad. Uh, and uh, yeah, either way, we, it's a black night. Either way, it's a black light nightmare. You know, tell us what happened on that ship. Chewie, were home. Oh, this okay. Next. <laughs> uh the death star uh we kind of teased this one last week too we updated it this is now tarkin's timeshare but they are no longer accepting reservations <laughs> uh i did like the coffin oh went the wrong way all right Stardust uh, yeah, so the second one uh second death star is palpatine's penthouse uh <laughs> but there are you know be careful of lightning strikes oops yeah. uh go ahead we're going through these okay so yeah uh, ghost <laughs> updated to uh, Rebels Recreational Vehicle. There's so many fun ways uh, to enjoy this ride. Obviously, some people did because human Twilight babies don't make themselves. That's a very <laughs> valid point. <laughs> Whatever happened, happened to that kid, too, by the way? When are we getting that kid back? You know? Because no. wasn't it flying at one point? It was flying the ship at one point, wasn't it? Well, we'll see. Does everybody know I'll what he's talking about? back to that yeah. Mandalorian when they thought Baby Yoda was their kid. I love that. Um, that'll, be, that'll be season in the first two. season of Matt. Yep, that was. Uh, oh, we'll see that. Kid. But we've seen the kid. We've seen the kid yeah, already. Exactly. I mean, he doesn't look anything like it. He, he looks like he looks a lot like cat uh, or a lot like um Doom. And Doom's not his name. What's his name when it's not Doom? Kaden. Kaden. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah, this one was hard. I, I I gave up on trying to find something clever on this one, so it's just Vader's villa. That was good. Like, I like that. Long Super Star image, yeah, didn't you? Because that looks like it's extended. Uh, I can't remember if I had. Uh, I don't think I did any fitting on this. This one. is good. I like hey, this. Yeah, this, one. this is the Razor Crest. She's now under renovation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, military gunship built before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. yeah. This one too. Oh, jeez. The so resolute uh, Sky, oh, oh, oh. Skywalker School for Force Sensitive Children. Wow. Uh, you're, they're in good hands. Oh, they're in very good hands. Oh, wow. That's dark. That's good. Oh, uh, go ahead. What's next? Uh, so this is the Bad Batch, now known as the Bad Batch Bachelor Pad, or <laughs> now actually it's Omega's Playhouse. Omega's Playhouse. I mean, Omega. This is. To, uh, I know this is a joke, but this is actually it was the what, Havoc Marauder, which I didn't know until it now. was. It was the Havoc Marauder, but you, did you know what Lego did on this one too with Slave One? They changed this one to the Bad Batch's ship, and yep. nobody said Star anything ship about it. Or ship. Uh, <laughs> Leaky, do you know it? Was it Starship or ship? Just ship. Not just ship. Yeah. Ah. Nobody. Yeah, nobody it looks like a Tie uh, Fighter that somebody put the damn wings on backwards. Well, <laughs> I like the ship actually. Uh, so yeah, this one, uh, the Banshee is now known <laughs> as Double D. Uh, for those of you, just get your, get your uh, mind out of the gutter. Double D stands for Dark Disciple. Just get your mind out of the gutter, guys. This used to be Ventress's uh, ship, the Banshee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know if people knew that that's what that was because he just called it the Banshee. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this one right I didn't explain. Uh, so uh, K... Uh, Bane's uh, ship, Xanadu Blood, which I learned was a gift from the uh, Emperor, or I guess he wasn't Emperor then, but anyway, Palpatine. Uh, so we just changed things up a little bit. It's now Singing Rambo. 
Uh, let me know if I need to explain that one. Xanadu was a musical. Blood, Rambo, First Blood. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, I see uh, what that's you did. Now I get it. That's a I, thought, oh, okay. I thought we canceled dad jokes. I really did. I, I thought, we I thought there was going to be also some weird connection to like... Uh, it's the sing hey, it's a great name, the Singing Rambo? No, okay, that's anyway. great. Well, I'm going to put on my ELO <laughs> record like after it. this. So, I like ELO. Okay. Marco, no, did you approve right. this? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't approve this at all. Okay, what's up next? Oh, this one might get me in trouble. So this one is, uh, so it's an X-Wing T-65 Starfighter, which is Luke's X-Wing, which the ship's designator, I learned, actually, is Alpha Alpha 589. Uh, Luke himself is, uh, what, uh, what, Red 5? But anyway. Red 5. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be careful nowadays because we don't know it's an X-Wing. Maybe it identifies as something else, Y-Wing. So this is alphabet preference because we just don't know. <laughs> You're slowly losing steam, Jedi. Mind. Slowly losing steam. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, last <laughs> one. Why is Tina Turner? Oh, 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 Tina Turner. Might, okay, we might be canceling this <laughs> too. Okay. The uh, Twilight <laughs> is, I'm not doing this every week. Okay, and then we have uh, the Twilight Dancer, which is now known as Tina Turner's number one album from 1984. Or Rancor Food. <laughs> Do I need to explain that? <laughs> no, but I didn't know the ship was called the Twilight Dancer. <laughs> it's not a very famous or well-known ship. I I just came across it when I was looking up ships, and I'm like, Twilight Dancer, and then the song just popped right into my head. <laughs> Somebody was really heartbroken in Jabba's Palace. The, she yeah. got thrown down that the right the music floor. They named the ship after her. Oh, yeah. That's the music uh, that was on the road when they had. Every time you run. listen to that song in the future, you'll you'll replace yep. "Private Dancer" with "Twilight Dancer." <laughs> uh, for everyone that still has a seven-year-old boy in them, uh, look again at the original cut of "Return of the Jedi." There's a lot of nipple in there. There is. There is. Yes. yes. <laughs> in case you missed it when you were six or seven, you'll you'll see. Okay. It That's how wow. human. Wow. All right. Again. So yeah, we're wow. done with that segment. That segment's over. Thank you. <laughs> They may be All green. Right. Still the segment Jedi. Ever. Thank you for crap. I don't know if I should thank you for that or just shake my head. So I'm gonna shake my head. <laughs> you have the other segment right here. You're gonna look hey, you next time you want for it. it. You asked for it. You know what though, Jedi, that actually warmed my heart. I I've, I've been struggling with the new Lego setup names. They took rid of the slave one and that, that made me feel a little better. Well, that's what I'm here eh. for. <laughs> Yeah, the old man club. Yeah, feeling a lot better today after that one. I haven't. We... Okay, so here we go. Let's. Hey, if we, we haven't got people riled up with that. Let's get people <laughs> riled up on this. Here we go. Well, it's a trap this week. There'll be some riling. <laughs> Mike, by the way, both I did approve both these segments, and both yes. these segments were like I was asked multiple times if it's okay. Uh, the Jedi stuff. I quickly glanced over and goes, a lot of it's not funny. But sure, we can do it. And this one, I was like, <laughs> "You're all fired." <laughs> and this one, I was like, "Uh, yeah, we got to do it." This wasn't but, my concept alone here. Okay, no, it was my concept. I, yeah, Pete was like, Pete actually asked me what I thought about this, and I was like, "Well, it's going to be our trapper. It's a not. It's not." Yep. And then when Jedi, then JJ said, "I don't think I feel like doing that because I don't want the hate mail." <laughs> I said, "I'll take credit for it, and they can send it to me as usual." So. I'm getting get a lot of hate mail this week, but that's okay. Uh, let's go and try this. On me. I'm okay with that. I don't let's care. Here comes, it. Send it to it's me. Solo fault. Well, <laughs> here comes this week's It's a Trap, with complete with probably the spelling errors, because uh, I didn't send it to the editor in time. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I fixed them. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So here's the real question of, will the real Bo-Katan Kirze please step forward? Uh, as... I'll start off by saying I don't know if anybody read Bounty Hunters 14. I know we went over it a little bit earlier. This is, yeah, this is the panel here that kind of created a little bit of controversy in okay. Star Wars Internet verse. Um, but basically, uh, the question no, was not, not time out, not Star Wars. This is speculation. Star Wars fans don't okay. Don't yeah, really okay. Get too there you go. About this panel. Star Wars speculation. Internet news. Yeah. Um, you want to call it that? So let's flip to the next slide. We'll get into it here. Go ahead. Okay, so um, let me pull it up with mine. Okay, so real quick, just a little bit on Bo Katan and the Death Watch. Uh, so um, I'm gonna have to read from my phone a little bit here. Sorry, folks. Um, 
so you had pretty much the basic gist of it was that um, Bo-Katan was supposed to be kind of that person in the back, le- or I guess right. Could you go back a panel? Go back yeah. a panel, Pete. Let me explain what's going on here. Yeah. Because I, I didn't explain it in the thing because I thought he was going to explain it a little better. So Sorry. in the front, they're supposed to be talking about the Shadow Collective. It's like a reference back to the Shadow Collective. If you see it, you've got the Pikes. You've got a Death Watch member in the front. Yes. Isn't Boba Fett or Django Fett? That's a death. Also is in the back right, there's somebody who looks like a female Mandalorian. Yeah. That yeah. is, and although the people have just completely gone through and not identified the person in the front, and this is why I say it's more of a speculation thing, uh, they have tried to say the person in the back is Bo Katana, and yeah, we'll we'll hear what JJ yeah. thinks. JJ yeah. does not like this, so go yeah. ahead. Right. Up, okay. Next slide. Yep. So, more or less, Bo-Katan, real quick background, I'm not going to go over it too much, but she uh, was in the Death Watch at the time of, uh, when I guess it was ran by Pre Vizsla. Um, is that how you say his name? It I is Pre Vizsla. Yeah, yeah I couldn't remember back to closing words Vizsla. how you pronounced it. Yeah. Vizsla, yeah. yeah. Um, so, more or less, she was in the Death Watch at that point. The Death Watch kind of was a collective group um, of Mandalorians, and they worked with the Shadow Collective at that time, which was Maul's group, and then they also were involved with Black Sun and a couple others. So uh, flip to the next slide for me, and we'll go over that. Um, so, like I said, part of the Shadow Collective was right under Maul. Maul eventually betrayed Vizsla, and it didn't end up too well for him in the end. He got his head cut off for that. Um, and from there, you had... Uh, it's the Super Commandos, which Gar Saxon ran. Um, and you had a, at 1.2, Maul also killed his sister, or her sister, Bo Katan's sister, which was yeah. the Duchess. Um, and so, pretty much after all that, Maul took control of the whole planet of Mandalore under the Shadow Collective. Kind of ran so, it from the background, hence the Shadow Collective name. But Real quickly, so Duchess Satine was in charge of all of Mandalore. She was a correct. peaceful ruler. There is a group that believed that the Mandalore's job was to conquer. That group was considered the Death Watch, which was a bunch of different houses of Mandalorians that had gotten together or split houses, like houses would split down the middle and go there. Satine has a sister named Bo-Katana. Bo-Katana uh, was actually going against her, thinking that her sister just needed to be disposed, but not killed. Darth mm-hmm. Maul and the, was the Shadow Collective, a different group that was in cahoots, and he decided to kill... Um, he decided to kill both Satine, which was Obi-Wan's girlfriend, and Pre Vizsla, so that he could be in charge of the Death Watch because the Pre Vizsla had the um, Dark, Dark Saber. Saber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. sorry, go ahead. Um, all right, so um, on this slide here for the helmets. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, that slide. Yep. Uh, going over that, here's the crux for me of the argument of whether or not it's her. Uh, this is. I guess you, I call it the owl helmet design. I don't know, I guess for night owls or however you want to call it. That's just kind of what I can refer to it as. I couldn't find an actual mm-hmm. name for the design of the helmet. Uh, but it's an incredibly common female Mandalorian helmet design. Uh, as you can see, there's numerous female Mandalorians that wore it, um, including that Sabine, Sabine's mom, uh, Costca Reeves, uh, Rook Cast, who's actually on there twice, comic version Rook Cast and Clone Wars version root cast, and then just an entire group of female Mandalorians wearing almost yeah. the exact same. Helmet. Banks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> root cast wasn't part of the, um, but root cast wasn't part of the uh, Night Owls. No, but I'm just saying the design of the helmet, the design, Not the color, yeah. just yeah. the design, yes. the yeah. eyes, and everything. Okay. Um, yep. And see, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that's a Night Owl helmet. It's a it's supposed to be a Death Watch helmet. But yeah, it's anyways, a female version. So, of it. Anyways, yeah. So on the right there, those are the two helmets that. It should actually look like for Bo Katan, uh, which the first one was when she was in the Death Watch, and the second one was when she was in the bottom one is when she was in the Night Owls. Um, so to me, that does not look like if you look at the helmet there in the top left from the panel, does not look like she has enough white on that helmet to actually be her. That's just my opinion. So uh, flip sure. to the next slide, we'll go over a little bit more. Um, everybody's kind of saying, you know, it's got to be her. Still, look at that helmet. Close enough. Well, maybe, maybe not. So you got three images here. Is that her? 
Uh, somebody, a female Mandalorian to Death Watch. Let's go to the next slide. It shock. It's not her. <laughs> so in those images. Um, so it is important to note a certain app, which I'm not going to name, did say that they confirmed it somehow through the artist. So take that for what you will. Um, and we'll go to our last slide here. So last slide is the odds are trap question. Um, if you go with never tell me odds, it's, you know, of course it's her. Uh, it makes total sense for her to be there. And that's got to be her helmet. The artist confirmed it. Everything else, you know, it's a, it's a definite, a first in canon Marvel appearance. And then the odds or the trap portion is, uh, you know, I remain unconvinced. And the artist, if it was going for her, he got it wrong. <laughs> And I also want to go back. Uh, well, we don't have to go back necessarily, but I think the um, my opinion of it, I'll go ahead and start off, is that I think that might have been what the artist was going for. It's just a yeah. terrible rendering of them. Uh, and I don't even think the, the guy up front, everybody's like, oh, is that Bubba Fett? Is that this or that? That's just a terrible rendering of what looks like to me just a, a super commando, Mandalorian super commando. It almost looks like Gar Saxon's outfit without the horns. So... I don't know who those people are supposed to be. I think they're just kind of generic representations. Maybe at some point somebody said, you know, is this Bo-Katan? And the artist said, sure, why not? Is what it seems like. But that's my opinion. So I lean way more towards trap than anything else. Yeah. You know, I'm going to leave this. Leave up the main picture. Yeah, because I got to break this down for a little bit. While we talk about this. I think if this yeah. is better to have up while we discuss than the uh, it's a trapper. Yeah. And you kind of you kind of cut off the last side too, which is actually um, part of the Death Watch here. Who's next? Anybody else want to speak on this? I Nikki, can if you want. Go ahead, Pete. Go ahead. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> that's another point. Yep. When did nice. first in canon become a key? That doesn't matter. Like to yeah. me, it doesn't matter. I get it. It's a cool appearance. If it is Bo Katan. It's a cool appearance. Fine. It's one panel in the background that means nothing to the actual story at this point. Mm -hmm. Who cares? So, so this is this. Is, that's, I, why, I, that's all I really have to say. Who, who, that's who, yeah. Who, afterwards, who we were talking because Pete asked me right off the bat. He's like, "Hey, what do you think of this?" And I was like, 50 50 But this is what I'm going to say. The guy in the front isn't just some super commando. That, in my opinion, when I first saw it, was like, "Hey, that's pre Vizsla," because if you look at the timing, what the words are actually saying. And the Shadow Collective, and also combining that with the Death Watch, that character would be pre Vizsla. And that would be pre Vizsla's first cameo appearance, whatever. But the the so, design of the be Mandalorian armor is not at all right, though. It's the colors. Yeah, around. well, that's, and yeah, that's totally where, wrong. but that's where the back part comes into play. That's where her, where the, the female who is a Mandalorian in the back comes to play. If he couldn't do pre Vizsla right, what makes you think he could do? That's uh, true. That's yeah. true. Is that supposed to Pokemon. be, as Sticks Boy says, is that supposed to be uh, Zizor or, or whatever? Yeah, it Zizor, is. Zizor, yeah. Zizor. Zizor. And that's Zizor. the thing. To me, that's what the thing was. You could was make that it. canonized Shadows of the Empire, too? Like, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I no, mean, but you could have made it anybody you want, given but the since thing. Like, when, but since when in comics, especially, this is the thing that cheeses me, especially in comics with speculation, do we ever listen to the artist? King Marvel tells you <laughs> that the first appearance of Wolverine is 180. First full appearance. And he says it everywhere. You know where yeah. it doesn't say first full appearance? I'm CGC, 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 CGC slab. CGC well, slab does not say first real appearance. Well, well don't, don't go off of CGC slaps because oh, can... it well it doesn't say it doesn't say it anymore. It doesn't say it anymore in Overstreet Guide either. And it doesn't any speculator will say that it's not. Any, Here's what any I'm getting. What I'm guessing is the artist used references from Shizor and Lompike and and Bo Katan and Boba Fett to draw these things. Went into the project having no idea what he was drawing, and that and so when go. asked, said, "Oh yeah, that is what I use to draw it." But I mean, first of all, this is just this is just these these this is people slash apps trying to be like, "Well, I have a whole box of this thing." And or whatever, but I don't have any copies of Defenders of the Lost Temple, so I don't want to give Defenders of the Lost Temple any more value since it's the first appearance of Dark Saber and Pre Vizsla and Bo Katan. Right, but I mean, that's not, I would, we can get into argument if that's an actual comment or not. I'm just saying, period, with this, I think people need content, so they're going to say whatever they want to say. And it, it, I'm not defending the app, 
but the app's only giving what people had told them, right? It wasn't the app, but it was the person that first pushed this news out. Yeah, it is. They they quote the guy who who did it. Yeah, so I forget who, who it was, but yeah. Who, who came out and said that this was from they got a hold of the artist, which the artist my point is when does yeah, that, that ever matter? Is that your info a little bit more though? That's the thing. But who cares and, and who cares? It doesn't matter. That's my point. Yeah, right. it doesn't matter. Right. Exactly. It's, it's, so it's still a cover book that's selling for cover. Like yeah. It that does, the it's more important that you get like if you want to talk about like it's it's Destic's first full appearance. Okay, that's relevant because she's actually on the cover and in it. it yep. But I think her first appearance technically was the book before because she was in three fucking it. panels. Yeah. And then this, you get pre I mean, that's definitely pre Vizsla. And I mean, I, I know that the coloring is a little bit off, but the markings are in the exact place that would be on his helmet. The helmet is made. The artist obviously isn't as in depth as some of us. Uh, mm -hmm. The markings are the wrong color. But yeah, yeah I, I get yep. where you're going. Well, I, I, is that yeah. the artist or is that the colorist? No, well, either true. way. Good point. That's yeah, good, good point. Yeah, but you know what? There's one thing that people haven't mentioned about the Bo-Katana thing. At the very least, there's not a single night owl marking on her helmet. Right, and no. considering considering how high up she was there, there'd be at least, even if it's the mm -hmm. V, there would have been something that would I mean, like if you're really trying to draw that character to draw it out, pre Vizsla, they gave him the uh the the hand five bars down the Still, front. It's the wrong matter. color. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. Is everybody going out buying that? Uh, what is it? Empire twenty seven? Because in the background of a montage picture, there's a grievous like image. Like, oh, this that's the first green. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like in a dark horse camp. Yeah, like, yeah. Doesn't and which, matter. Uh, which of the yeah. three Ahsoka in canon cameo exactly. appearances exactly. am I supposed to buy? <laughs> exactly. The dream. Yeah, well, that's yeah, a flashback, so that yeah. doesn't count. Mace, well, that's a dream Mace. sequence, so that doesn't count. Like, we brought that up. Did we bring that up about oh, something yeah. else the other day where it was like it was a yes. dream sequence, window, but it was a whole Mace book of dream sequences? Five. Like, yeah. And again, that's yeah. exactly that the same thing. That's exactly that the same thing. Clone Wars one. Simple as that. I don't. Sorry, you can't afford it anymore, but that's her appearance. Like it's that. That was my exact take on it when. You know what it actually says is imagine getting these folks together. So they could have made it pre Vizsla or, or uh, Bo Katan or anybody. It's just kind of them saying, imagine if these folks got together. Then the artist just drew a representation, a yeah. broad rep representation of each of these groups. So you could say, oh, well, the reader would say, oh, yeah, pre Vizsla was part of this. She was part of Death Watch. You know, that, that, that's all this is. I don't, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what we'll end it on this. Like, uh, it kind of plays into something on Renovision for you that are watching it. It's don't buy these comics now that Pete's doing, and that's kind uh, of it. Like, the comics we just discussed. Uh, yeah, yes. it's cool. It's cool because I do think like this is it. Like, it's cool if that was her in the background and in canon. I think it does matter, but I don't think it matters more than four ninety nine. That let me put you. Let me put it that way. I don't think yeah. it's it matters. Double cover at best. Well said. Double cover at best. Like this is yeah. oh, it's a fun little thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there you go. Uh, I actually well, think it. I actually think it is her. But just don't forget, this issue was also being pushed as the first full death stick. So I mean, it already had a first appearance in it. Yeah, so, which is another debate if that's actually the first. Oh, whatever, yeah. man. I mean, hey, look, dude. Do I think it is? I'll just just flat out. I'll say I actually think it's a bad rendering of her. Yes, because of how the story sets up. Because I think the guy in the front is pre Vizsla, and if that's pre Vizsla for the two seconds she spent in Death Watch. This. This scene makes sense because she went with Pre Vizsla to go help change the pikes and make sure they got online just after she had fought <laughs> with Darth Maul and uh, Oppress before she turned her back on both Pre and the Dark and the Shadow Collective. So it's literally a three seconds in a in a fucking TV show, and this is the scene. Yes. So there you go. All right. Anybody else have anything to add on to that? No. no. Okay. It's not a trap anymore then. All right. Up next, we've got. Uh, oh, we're going back to back. No, we aren't. We we're gonna go back to back with Jedi, JJ. I mean, but JJ, uh, he had to leave because he got so mad. He's got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, under the collar. It's yeah. not. Her. He was like, "You not to say it," because I wouldn't tell him what I was gonna say. You know, I told Pete it was fifty-fifty at best. You know, I mean, and that's kind of how I felt about it. And well, that was also pre these artist confirmations. Yeah, when we first yeah. started talking about it. Because it yeah. came up in the the, the CB side chat, like so. It was a pre Vizslaation. Yeah, it was a pre pre. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, Mike. Very yeah, nice. yeah. So either way, I mean, I don't think it. I don't think it matters. Uh, yeah. And Morello was out of pocket, so he couldn't ask Morello. 
If yeah. any of your wives like start talking to you about shoes or lipstick or something, just rewind the last 10 minutes and make them listen to that. And I promise you, they will absolutely tune right out. Yeah. 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 My wife doesn't talk about lipsticks and shoes. She talks no. about Clue and Police Academy with me. So, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Clue? Well, I don't know what that is. Did I freeze up? You don't know Clue? Uh, did I freeze up there? I must have freeze Okay. Clue the movie? Yes, Clue the movie. Clue? Oh, the movie Clue, yeah. Yeah, Clue, I know the Clue the movie. All right, here we go. JJ, back-to-back -back sections. Are you ready for this, or do you want me to run through it? Oh, I'll roll. All right. High Republic, books and novels, Wave 2 Wave came two. out. Yep. Go. So go ahead. We're just going to go over the novels real quick, because we've talked about some of them in the past. But um, So it came out June 29th already. Um, I know some people picked it up. Not everybody picked it up. But... Um, you had a whole bunch of different versions of it. A um, couple exclusives. You had a um, Target exclusive uh, with a sweet cover there. Um, you had the exclusive with a cool... I, now I don't forget. I think it was a poster of Chancellor So. Uh, and then you had the nice out-of-print uh, exclusive with a great cover and an awesome tote bag. <laughs> if you pick that one, I was promised Hold tote up. bags. The, the grocery bag, 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 the grocery yes. bag. Get out of here. Yeah, how, how I got yelled at for that. I got yelled. Somebody, somebody hit me up and told me I was 100 percent wrong for even criticizing that. Which I was like, okay. I think we spent five hand. minutes on the twirl uh, on one of those past shows. We did. We, we did. did. <laughs> we did. Um, I hit this next slide for me, would you? All right, next slide. Yeah. Sorry, I'm reading the first chat of how you can't see anything. All right, go ahead. Nope, I can see it now. <laughs> I fixed it. Um, so another June 29th release was the children's book, Race for Crash Point Tower. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually haven't read it yet. Um, I don't know if it's a good book or anything. I probably will read it at some point. Even though it's I'm going to read book. it now after reading the main novel. I yep, actually have. yep. Mm -hmm. I was saving it for that too. So, um, But that cool. did come out June 29th. If anybody wants to pick it up with the other novel, you can. Um, no exclusives or anything crazy for that that I know of or saw or anywhere. Um, and then July 27th, you have what's I guess you could call it the young adult novel, um, the second one. Uh, it's by Justina Ireland. Is it Justina? I always yeah. get it wrong. I think it's Justina yeah. Ireland. So, um, not, not to go back on you, but is the race thing, is that kind of like the uh, that other, like the kitty version, like a like a brief yes. synopsis of part of the novel? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, guess. I don't know. Yeah, if it, it, follows... it goes on. At, okay. It goes on at the same time. There's actually, yeah. you actually get one of these characters, and I'll talk about it later. Surprisingly, one of these characters shows up, and there's a portion and in the main novel, and they're there, and that's happening at this book is happening at the same time as that portion. Well, you know what I'm talking It's like that great. What was it? The Great Jedi. Oh, you're asking about that. that. Part, mm -hmm. It like run concurrent with the first yeah. High Republic novel. Like, is that right. kind of the same deal? Yes. I, okay. Timeline wise, yes. Timeline wise, yeah, it's so a bigger like than event, that. No. Like yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, so July 27th, uh, you have Out of the Shadows, uh, which was going to focus as like I, like I said, a, a I guess a young adult novel, if you want to call it that. Um, do you have a couple exclusives for that? Uh, Walmart exclusive, which is kind of weird to have a Walmart exclusive. I didn't know they did Walmart exclusive novels. No. Um, yeah, I didn't know you could then... read if you shopped at Walmart. <laughs> you got a nice Target exclusive again there. Oh, you're gonna get a hammer for that one. Right <laughs> Address all hate mail to this is my segment. Address all hate mail to Mark over that one. Um, all right, so flip to the next slide for me. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Have you guys uh, ever been to a Walmart before, though? Seriously, I yes. went today. Yes. I went to one. I, I I don't know what goes on in that place. Go <laughs> ahead. Well, according to Marco, Walmart shoppers are in luck because this next one's an audio book. You don't have to read it. So, I don't think they can listen to it either. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Tempest Runner. It, I don't know what goes on. I go. To, I went to a Walmart. It, it looks like somebody. It looks like people just went in there and threw everything on the ground and walked out. Like that's what Walmart looks like. I don't get it. <laughs> I've seen swamp beats that look better pegs. than that. If you want to huh? see empty pegs at a, at a at a store, just Jesus. go to the story section of a Walmart. Yes. Yeah. So you came to Walmart like four blocks from my house and you didn't come visit. Thanks, Mark. No, see, it's every awesome. Walmart. It is yeah, every thanks. Walmart's like that. Oh, that's cool. I get it. <laughs> Uh, Joe, we're gonna cover uh, visions next week. Uh, yes. So, Tempest Runner, I should say, is an audio. It is an original audio book. I think it's only on. No, I'm sorry. This one's actually being released um, broadly, so you can buy it at like a Barnes and Noble on CD, and it's also going to be, of course, on Audible and all the places. They'll where eventually turn it in. They did the same thing with. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Is it Hi, Duke yeah, Duke Lost. Yeah, yeah. high likelihood, even though it's an original audio book, you, you will probably see it released like a year or so later. 
Oh um, yeah, that as, was a, a, as a book regularly. They'll adapt it. Like that. What was that Wolverine thing? They did that for Wolverine hey, too. They did yeah. audio, and then there's like it was a long, long night or, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. We, we you can't we can't we can't read it over at what Mario's even dude. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope I didn't hear. I couldn't find out, but um, Duke you lost, which was the last one, was a full cast. So I hope this one's Ooh. a full cast. I don't know, but full cast audiobooks are fun. They're kind of like a play or movie production. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, and then October twelfth, this news of this just dropped this week, um, and we'll probably cover Visions a little bit more, maybe some other time. But um, uh, Ronin, which is a novel tied into one of the episodes of Visions called The Duel, and um, seems like a pretty cool concept for a novel. Yeah, looks um, awesome. Yeah. So, and then they're just, uh, they're just copying the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. Nah, more Samurai Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're yeah Marco's Marco's favorite artist, Samurai Jack. Oh, okay. Little Gindy. <laughs> Next slide for me. Uh, okay, so this year, Secrets of the Sith is a reference. This looks book. cool. Yeah. 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 It looks like it's got some great art, too. I, I only yeah. saw a few pages preview of it, but good art. Um, so for those not aware, reference book pretty much kind of tells you the history of things. It's almost, almost a little bit like reading a textbook, but less dry. It's not like a flowing story like a novel. Um, but there's... In Star Wars reference books, there's a lot of key facts. So if you want, yeah, to they know, introduce some stuff in reference books, and they explain yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They really yep. do. Like the uh, there was that whole Revan link to Rise of the Skywalker and the Knights of the Ren thing that came out in a reference book. So there's a lot of stuff they put in there that's pretty fun. So it's a good pickup mm -hmm. to read as a coffee table book to pick up and read a few pages every so often. Um, that comes out October 5th, and then we're going to go to our recommended reading page, which is our last one. And um, recommended reading page. Yep. Yeah. Next slide. So, um, as we kind of mentioned last week, there was a virtual conference kind of with all the High Republic authors. Uh, one of which is Kevin Scott. And they kind of, during that conference, talked a little bit about how a lot of the High Republic stuff, they tie in together with each other. Um, this book is Dooku Jedi Lost, which, again, was an audiobook original, but it's also now released in print. Ties Kevin in Scott told me it'd never be a, a, a written book, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Del Rey paid him enough money. He doesn't mind it. But uh, <laughs> so going from there, but it's it's tied into so much stuff with the High Republic so far, and it mm -hmm. seems like it's becoming more and more. We went over the Lost Twenty last week. I was to say like uh, the Lost Twenty and stuff like yeah. that, right? Yeah, like, this is where that literally. Out. There's like 50 references to this book in the new novel, like yeah. just crazy stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So this cool. book ties in a lot, and it tells the history of Dooku. And it tells a little bit of the history of Asa's adventure. So it's a good story in and of itself, but it's starting to tie in with a lot of stuff in the new runs of books and stuff for the High Republic that I really suggest everybody pick it up if they can. Uh, I would also like to address this. No, no Myers because it's technically Meyer, but since we all pronounce it Myers out here, they don't have books there either because we can't read. All <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so Calvin Scott at Celebration had told me that this book was never going to be, it's always going to be, uh, no, on the audio. No, no, never. I go, yeah, yeah but when when's it coming out? Because I, I don't listen to it. I, I read. And he's like, yeah, but no, you, yeah. no, this is the thing. And then six months later, I had to wait for it. But we got it's started. a good audiobook but, production, though, just so everybody knows. It. I it know, is but I'm not cast. trying to spend that money, dude. Now, you don't have to. You just, it takes so long to listen to 15 dude, hours. Free Audible. No, no actually, it's free a free Audible thing. Just sign up for your free Audible yeah. and then listen then. That's a great thing. It's it's a pretty quick listen, really, in a... Is it? As I the thought there's, you guys yeah. are saying it's like 14 or 15 hours. Some of the novels, but I think the the for, the, for like Rising Storm was really long, but that's probably yeah. about eight, eight or so hours, maybe hmm. nine, maybe. And, and I'm just gonna say this: Kevin Scott is awesome. Mike and I got to talk to him doing three comic money. He's he is fantastic. He, he he's really an is. awesome dude. He's really cool. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying I'm awesome. He pretty much told me that I was an idiot for even wanting to read it and just go buy the audiobook yeah. and leave him alone. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. He made it's like, 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 completely out of his. But he wasn't wrong. wrong. You are an idiot. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. No, no, no. I get that. He was just like, I was like, yeah, yeah. But for real, let's just make it into a paperback so that we can read it. And he's like, well, no, that's not the new objective. The new objective is to see how audiobooks work. I go, that's great. But when you're done fooling around with that, like, can we please? <laughs> so when's that release going to be? And he pretty much was saying, like, you know, they're not. He's at the Del Rey, you know like this there's a del rey booth he's at the del rey booth and they bring the artist down to talk yeah. to the fans and try to pump whatever book they're doing and he's there and he's specifically for that and he could just go like hey you know what just he did he nicely he's like uh pretty much like piss off 
<laughs> I, I can't tell you when they're going to put it into a written book. And you know that I'm trying to sling this audiobook thing. So he's a great guy. He's awesome. I, I mean, he did nicely. I got to do my job. I'm pushing the Yeah, he was pretty right much now. like, stop I have to do my stop job. Stop busting my stuff. Mm -hmm. Speaking of novels, let's cover Raising Storm real quickly. Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to... We're not going to really spoil it, um, considering you guys haven't finished listening to it or whatever. Yeah. And we want to do a deeper dive in there. Oh, there you go. But I'll go over some of it real quickly. I actually, out of these three covers, um, the out of print one, because it's actually like a scene in the book, which is kind of cool. By the way, that dragon thing's kind of dope too, because uh, somebody rides one of those. Um, it was pretty like cool. I did a couple, couple somebody. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple somebody. There's two, as you can see. There's two of them up there and two people riding it. That actually happens in the like. This is a scene out of the book. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, and also the main cover, the Barnes and Noble cover or the regular cover, I thought was really cool because those three characters they really get into those three characters, and we'll tell you who they are real quickly. Uh, well, Ty, your tote bag. Hmm? I didn't buy the tote. No, I didn't buy that. I didn't bag? buy the tote bag, especially after somebody wrote a three paragraph scathing review on my opinion on the tote bag. I do they, refused to buy it. Do they work for out of print? <laughs> like, I, they must have. You, I should probably go back and grab that email. It, I mean, it was they were using real big words to tell me how I'm a moron, uh, which is fine. Um, that happens to me on IG occasionally, apparently. He's like, I don't need real big words. I'm fine with yeah. the small ones. Yeah, you can just call me an idiot, dude. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. yeah, that's we, we addressed that last week, too. Like, if you yeah. guys want to call somebody an idiot on this show, feel free to call me it. But, 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 but don't try to Start leaving voice messages on anybody else's thing. And this is my show. And if you have an issue with something that somebody says here, you can come to me about that. So, um, yeah, you heard that. That's who you bother. And you bother I are, me. I are, <laughs> uh, I are dumb. If he could use smaller words, please. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that's that, that, wasn't, that, wasn't what, that wasn't what the even that wasn't what the message was. There's was somebody stalking somebody on the show. I mean, that's the only way you could see it. They're stalking him and trying to bully him. And I don't, that doesn't play well. Either way, T.Y. Yurik, who is going to be in the up and coming. After this novel, I was kind of wondering how they were going to do her character. After this novel, I'm really down for this character. Mm -hmm. Like, I am all in for her book that's coming up. This is the Scott stuff that we love here as a panel, I believe. And how he mm -hmm. developed this character in this book is amazing. Like, her yep. storyline was really good. Uh, man, he is what you... He would kind of be the classic uh, Jedi. So, yeah, I, when I went through and I compared, like... I don't have my notes in front of me, but I, as when I first started listening or uh, reading the book, I was you, writing Ruben. down the. Um, yeah, I did read it, but as I was writing down, so much talk about audiobooks. Um, I was writing down characters and like relating them to others. He kind of struck me as like a an Anakin, but like less angsty, teenage angsty about everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know who first, he, he he came up with a chapter and stuff. But. You know what I thought he was a combination of Voss and Anakin. Like I think he's yeah. right there. Yeah, he has well, that humor to deflect a little bit like Voss does. Mm -hmm. And he plays that line in between where he's definitely, there's definitely dark parts of him, but you don't know. But he definitely, unlike Anakin, who just cared about himself and wanted to save it, where Voss mm -hmm. played the dark side of. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, uh, I agree. <laughs> to, to I expand on out? that, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, to expand on that a little bit too, he's, uh, it, it explains through the novel, but he's, um, Kind of, he has the rank of Jedi Knight, mm -hmm. but pretty much all the people that he started with in the Order, which is Avar, Chris, and some of the other characters, have become Jedi Masters. Yeah. So he's kind of like style. he's left on that um, that totem pole kind of at the bottom, and he he feels seems like he constantly feels pressured by that. So. Does he? I don't think he wants to be I, in the master portion of it. Well, it I, seems like he did, and then it seems like he doesn't. I, I, I see that's the part that I kind of like that they're swaying away from. I was glad that they, they don't really bring Ava Chris into this book, which I was no, really glad. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. And the and the portions that they use Geo Stanley for is kind of what he's supposed to be, and they don't go too far into it. Like they go more into man and kind of where his feelings are. And I thought they did an acceptable job of it. And Bell, uh I thought they did a great job with him too, like developing his character. And he actually has big parts across it. I would say that this is broken down into four different, distinctly different areas when you're reading this book. And Bell kind of links all the characters. Bell and Man pretty much link all the characters together. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I thought they did a great job. And that I thought he was dead in the first 20 pages, and he, he's not, obviously. <laughs> um, 
up next. Sorry, I'm in this other part. Thank you, VK. Hit that that thumbs up button. We appreciate it. They also, so the Tempest they brought back. If you remember, they killed the Tempest last time, one that looked like Hondo uh, Weekend. So they brought back a new one. They put in this z Terror character. Who, this is just kind of what he looks like. He ends up getting like a mech outfit, which is kind of cool. They brought Pan back. And then, of course, they got D, and she, as usual, is BA. Like, at one, like she goes toe to toe with a couple Jedis. Um, and they don't make the fighting unrealistic. They make it realistic enough, which was kind of cool. I like the fact that they've done it where it's like, if you think about it, in this book, they kind of explain that the Jedi are kind of lazy, right? Like, right mm-hmm. at the get go, they talk about how they used to always have lightsaber battles, and now they just do like this ceremonial, like, oh, hey, tink, tink. Mm-hmm. Let's touch our tips together and have a good time. Uh, <laughs> Question for anybody who listened to the audio book: Did they have any like death metal or any music like portions in the back when they were uh, in the Nihil? <laughs> like, no, the, the, no, the, they didn't play any so, of the death metal from uh, Nihil like they did in the other books. But that's um, awesome. um, they, in some of the, um, the ceremony scenes and stuff, there was some like classical, like ceremonial type of stuff and. Uh, and, and there is a little bit of music for what are like the they, action scenes? Like did they, they play up like the Star Wars them. music for the uh, action stuff? Yes, or? yes, they yeah. did have awesome. some. Okay, they typically well. do a pretty good job with the music in the yeah. audio. Yeah. So. The, only thing, the only three things I'll say about these characters I like to hear Soul's opinion on is like they really did a lot with D. Um, Pan just seems like a rehash now. They seem like they've taken that character and made him a rehash of the uh, the Storm Chaser that they already killed, the Tempest they already killed off mm-hmm. from the last book. So Wasn't can... he like the? I don't want to say subordinate of that guy, but he was he was pulling for that guy rather than he does. He was, but it, yeah. Sorts. yeah, but now no, he yeah. wasn't because they're all supposed to be equal. But now he is like literally just the reembodiment of them. Like he's yeah. the exact reembodiment. And the Z tier character was a waste. They 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 could have just they they didn't do anything with them at all. I mean, well, no the, the, the third tempest that was like the like the horde like that was just like the masses, right? I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like out of the three, you had the more uh, like, like devious, the more stealthy, and then you had I had everybody else. So it was it was, just... I think they got a little bit more into the the Night Hill ranks, at least in the beginning of this book, than I remember in the last one. But like, mm, yeah. I was like, I was like, clouds and tippets. Like I'm writing down my notes. I'm like, where is this ranking system? I'm like, <laughs> no, sounds like a weather last report. Last yeah, no, they, they, <laughs> like, they went through up with it. I just got a video game and thinking about like mini bosses. That's how I start. Yeah, so these three are like the mini bosses. Boss number one and Zatir was underneath D as a cloud uh, runner. So like, uh, if she's like, if she's like, well, Ro would be the Dom, I guess. Then they would be the underboss. She D would be an underboss. And then mm-hmm. he would yeah. be like the now we're making mafia boss. connections. He'd be like a street level boss, right? <laughs> yeah. So he got a promotion pretty much. Um, where Pan yeah. just kind of like I don't know. Either way, it was they they did a great job with D. The other two, I thought it was really lazy writing with Pan. Like they didn't, they could have done better things with him. Well, um, I think that they were trying to go. For, here's kind of how I got it: was that they kind of divided the three into our our, mm-hmm. and it is a little bit of lazy writing. I agree. A little bit of our our standard stock characters where pan is your muscle leader and then you have d who's your strategic like you know very good at strategy very good at playing the field very good at you know doing things double crossing or planning out a, a something or very strategic mm-hmm. and then zatir who's just kind of technically i, I yeah. couldn't tell if they're like ready to if they're waiting to use him and bring him up in like the next novel, it almost felt a little bit, or if they were just absolutely like, yeah, he's here. Like, yeah, like the, the I think character. too. I mean, like I said, in that video conference where they said they all kind of plan and work together, like D's pretty much got her own in the Tempest runner, her own audiobook coming out. Mm. So yeah, you she's know. definitely going to take over for the, yeah. I mean, they're definitely going that route where it's not going to be, they're not going to have three anymore. It's going to be just, like I said, they already got in the comics. They've got a mini group that runs around with Row, and then I think you're gonna see a little bit other. I just was disappointed that they turned Pan into that because Pan was supposed to be dumb muscle, and he turned into just like conniving, like uh, you know, Satis, kind of like the other character mm-hmm. was before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did start it off though, where Row runs into this is kind of cool. This character called Udai, who is a Talarte, Talarte, Talatarian, Talatarian. Okay, so <laughs> it's like a it's like <laughs> part reptile, pat part bird. Mm-hmm. This is just like a image. This was from um, a tabletop. Wait, you game say game. reptile and bird? I see fur. Yep. 
I think yeah. it's because, well, so this isn't actually him. No, this yeah, is this isn't a, actually him. This yeah, is this an is... image of an old, a character from an old game. This is his species. Yeah, his species. So technically, the, how it's... From the Dark Crystal. <laughs> from the Dark Crystal. <laughs> it... but, so they reintroduced the character. Well, it was George well, Lucas. <laughs> the good part about it is they reintroduced this character, and that species was almost completely wiped out by the Sith at one time. So it gives us... There's a lot of linking up to the Sith. And actually, at there's a lot... You know, we've said the Sith is coming... And I think this novel has, without say, I mean, it doesn't say, they never say Sith in here pretty much, but, you know, I think this novel hints that they're actually finally going to be coming and we should be we seeing it in this next week. Check week. out and, Darth Brawl, right? And uh, Seven. Which is good. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is good. So I think that's going to come up. And I, he was the character I felt sorry for the most. Who? Who does? Udi Dees. Udi Dees. Yeah. Yeah. I was pulling I, for him at the start. I well, won't say what happens, but. Yeah. Then if you got through the first six chapters, uh, you know what happens. All right. They also brought back uh, and and went a little bit in depth in some characters and brought in some new characters too. Great Storm, who was um, one of the characters I was looking for good things out of. He was the one that was captured by Roe and tortured. They do bring him back and they go really in depth with what's been happening with him and everything else that's been going on with him. Porter Eagle, Ingle, the cook guy. Yeah, that actually, was cool. I like that guy. Yeah. You go, you go <laughs> like him more now. Steven oh, Seagal like from under, character, yeah. I mean, Steven cool. Seagal's character from Under Siege. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, no, so like Buckets of Blood shows up and everything else, but he shows up and he's got actually produ- – like they do they do about three chapters, probably in total 20 pages on him that really give him some character development. So it's really cool. There's also this character called Orba Lynn, which I kind of – I don't know what you guys think. I want to know what you thought Isn't about it. Isn't that McFarlane from Hellboy 2? No, yeah. So he <laughs> he's this one species. He's the only one that's ever been a Jedi before, and he's pretty much like this blob, like goop. He's like goop, right? Is that right? Is that how yep. how do we explain yep. that? Yeah. Yep. That, that's right. Yeah. He, he's in a containment suit. Uh, yeah. The I'm just a cook, Joe's. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, Porter. He's also known because of the Battle of Blood or whatever it was. Whatever he yeah. was, that that Porter character is something else. And in this book, they he they show off some of his finer skills, and he's very well respected. Um. Mm. But Orville Lynn is like this one. It was kind of cool. I like what they did with the character. He's a historian and he's, you think he's like, oh, well, he's just this blob historian thing, but he actually can fight. Um, and, you know, I'm trying not to give it away, but yeah, he's a badass, dude. And it was really yeah. cool to see that. I thought they reminds me a little bit of Hellboy, too. It could be. Yeah. 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 It reminds me a little bit of Jocasta New, just in the way that, like, yeah. you think he's like a total little bookish person and then, like, when you read the comics for Jacasa New, she's like taking out soldiers. And yeah. Like, so his whole thing is he's like the uh, person who uh, runs all the artifacts. He's the epicure like this type mm-hmm. person who who goes around. He's actually upset at one point because he was supposed to be leading the tour of people to explain how cool real old stuff was, and that, like that was his big thing. But then he was like, "But I'm a Jedi, so I can't be mad at it." Uh, yeah, Porter does need a spinoff, dude. I think I he does. Joke. <laughs> yeah, I think he does. I think he. I think some of these characters actually under siege do. three. <laughs> uh, also, so the Chancellor Soul, they did a good so so so. I say so. I don't know. So, they did a good job explaining her pets. Like they had a lot of play in here and her. I thought they did an excellent job with it. I will say this because you're going to end up getting it. They do the one thing that I'm disappointed with this book. Um, and probably some of a lot of the Star Wars stuff that's been going forward lately. Like when they did Bloodlines. And they showed the relationship between uh, uh, Han Solo as a new father and Princess Leia. I thought that was one of the best jobs of doing relationships in Star Wars. I thought sometimes the stuff gets corny with the Mary Jade stuff and the Luke Skywalker or any of the other dating stuff they do. Like, sure, the relationship between Han and Leia have always been good, but they have slowly deteriorated to writing books where what's going on, Jamie, where they uh, think that we need a teeny bopper relationship going on in this book. Yes, is that it? Twilight. Cool. Yeah, yeah. In this relationship, it yeah, turns like out a hundred-year-old man starts to date a sixteen-year-old girl. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, in this one, it's the mayor's son and um, the chancellor's son. Mm. They they focus like thirty pages on a relationship that there was no purpose for it. Like it it made there was no gain in the story. Like when you tell a story, like when you told at least Luke's story, or if you told Solo's story, or if you told any other story, uh, the story alphabet's the good one. When you did alphabet and you did uh, what's her name, you're a quill in alphabet and her relationship story with her partner. Mm-hmm. At Dr. Aphra's another one. That's fine. But this one, 
why are we doing teeny boppy? Ooh, you're so cute. Ooh, you're so cute. Let's go run away. Like there was no point. You wasted 30 pages that I had to read with that crap. Uh, so I think it, I think it brought it down. Yeah. But really, is it for this one? Like they have why yeah. stuff. I mean, I yeah, this is not the, it's not necessarily the young adult focus. Oh, I will say this for writing it. Kevin Scott, who always does a pretty good job with horror type stuff. Mm. Not in like Freddy Krueger type horror, but like, yeah, yeah. you know, body horror and that type Suspense of stuff. But, um, horror. yeah, yeah. Um, writes this as a, if it wasn't a Star Wars novel, you'd almost say at certain points it was a little bit violent. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he writes very well. It's like, I think Charles soul kind of pulled some punches in the first one. Yeah. In Light of yeah. the Jedi. Compared yeah. to the way Scott or Scott writes it, so it was done. But that's what I was saying. So like, there's heads being crushed in by people's heads at the last minute, and like mm -hmm. a bunch of cool stuff. And then they have this like, yeah, this YA type thing in there, which was just mm -hmm. out of place. Irrelevant. I have to and think they'll come back to it at some point. Not, I don't know about the it's relationship, so, but those characters, well, at least the they, character of her nothing. son. I think the character of her son they will. Um, well, really? All the yeah. I, I thought it was irrelevant to the whole storyline, but this is a know, fair point. I have a question for you guys about <laughs> That's audience. True. Kids probably are until about they're thirty. Oh, yeah. You're still yeah. a thirty kid until you're thirty today. Well, I read I read the young adult Star Wars novels, so there it goes. <laughs> well, that was my question around audience for for these adult novels versus the young adult novels. I and and I've been, I've only started to read this, but I I was trying to figure out who is the audience for this, right? Like. It's, usually, usually this base one is for the Star Wars like fans, like the fan, right. like the big fan base. They don't. That's what I'm saying. Like the, usually the you you the YA stuff, you get into that, and I expect it, and that's perfectly fine. But like if Gray wrote some crap like this, I think everybody would be killing her. Like Scott shouldn't. You could tell it's it doesn't fit in his writing style, and it also doesn't fit in this book. I'm well, not again directed so just to the Star Wars fan because then they'd have to write in things like prostate exams and you think it comes from, older. Do you think it comes from his background as a comic writer more than a novelist? And he has well, to kind of fill in those like 26 pages at a time versus yeah, maybe. it's like subplot. Let's throw this in to kind of yeah. But, it, but no, but that's that it. it was is empty subplot. There was no subplot in it. It it didn't make like when you have the man relationship that actually happens, which was very short. Like the relevance of that could have been the same as the relevance as. Uh, the these two um, young men's uh, uh, elaborate. What is it, Elzor man? Yeah, Elzor, Elzor. man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elzor when you man. just say a man relationship, it sounds sexist when you just say it like that. By the way, oh no, no, I, Elzor man. Sorry. I, I pronounce it Elzar probably because of Futurama. But... <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it was a lot of fluff, it, Shannon. It was. Yeah. I, I, am at I wrong? First, I felt a lot like you did, Marco, mm -hmm. and then I kind of started to feel more like JJ in the fact that there's a good chance that I think they're going to touch on this portion again later in mm -hmm. one of the other novels, very yeah. possibly. Maybe. And I, and I think he also was maybe trying to draw in the, the crowd to, to a relatability kind of like the mm -hmm. um, Padme Anakin forbidden love thing and all oh, there shouldn't, but it can. And, but, yeah. uh, but, but you had, but, but you had doing that and, Padme Anakin. Yes. Anakin but, thing. Yeah. But, but so you had that with the Elzor man, uh, agree. Well, yeah. agree. Like so, you already well, touched on it, and this too, you didn't. It didn't help the plot out at all. No, it, it really that's didn't. The problem was no. they were sprinkling in there, and it didn't. Like, because then I was like, okay, cool, this character might be important, and then mm. through the book when I was reading, I was like, okay, well, the importance of this character is finally going to show up, and there was zero importance <laughs> to her side, <laughs> zero. <laughs> But that's why I was. But I think it will be. In, uh, yeah, really that's why I was feeling like maybe in the next novel that might come up. Okay. Well, and don't forget too. Like I said, the the five creators for this, for the High Republic, are kind of all intertwined, and they all do different stuff. Kevin Scott's got other comics coming out going forward, and he's going to write other stuff. And you got like people switching between young adult and kids novels, like mm -hmm. Ireland does, mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Some of the other writers might have been like, "Hey, you got to play up plant the romance." Yeah, plant it, yeah, it, plant yeah. Seeds. it might be a seed for the the young adult novel. They they, they should up, they so. should never have him. In, well, in my opinion, and I really really enjoy this novel. They should never have him do young love again because he doesn't do it well. <laughs> about as well as George Lucas and not yes. his, yeah, and yeah. Pat. Not, not his forte. Sand. Not not good sand. at all. Not really good. Yeah, yeah, it was not good. Um, but yeah, besides that, I did actually like what they did with the Chancellor, even introducing it that she has a son, and then like 
I don't want to give away what happens with her. Uh, but yeah, there's some cool there's stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, this is what I'm going to hit up to. Ram Jam. Ram Jam. Ram, 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 Ram whatever. Jam or run. So this is why I'm going to read. I'm actually like really excited to pick up the second novel because of this character. He was in there very little. And um, he's kind of, he. I'll just, he's in jail at one point. I thought okay. this was a girl. Oh, is it a girl? I don't no, know. I'm looking at the picture. It, it's it's a boy. It looks it's like a, a boy. It looks like a girl on the cover of the the kids book. I don't want to give away why it's. I think it's a boy because hey, I think the person the that's in, eyebrows, the fuller look. I don't know. I, thought I think the girl. person that's in jail with this character Ram refers to it. it refers think, to yeah, I, him I, as a I male. Right. Yeah. Refers to Ram as a male. Yes. Um, and the back and forth with that, and the the mistaking a Jedi, and it makes sense because of what. Is behind this and it's kind of a new type of jedi because this is a very mechanical jedi that doesn't technically the lightsaber is like a tool but not a tool he uses much you know what i mean it's a very interesting concept and i enjoy this character and i'm trying not to give away why i enjoy it but it this character is only in like 10 pages and it's 10 pages of done properly. Because you're a um, huge fan of Forge? Is this a, like Jedi yeah. Forge? No, yeah. Forge. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he's right. Yeah. Forge yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he I knows. Yeah, he right. knows what I like. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm actually looking forward to it because of this. I, I don't know what Solo's opinion was on, on that scene. Uh, try not to give away who else was in the jail, but. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was interesting. I thought it had good content. And, and again, I have to listen to this novel a second time because Kevin Scott, I, I love his writing. He writes more detail than most yes. any other writer that you'll ever read. He has, you know, where a, a normal writer will put in one or two descriptive words when they're describing someone or describing the scene or setting up the thing. He will put in 10 to 15 to, to really paint that picture for you. And so it really details what's going on. And there is so much going on throughout this book. Mm. It, it's, it takes two. Uh, it also makes this book very rereadable. The readability, rereadability on this book is at a one to 10, it's a 15. The and only, the only thing that clip, up. this clip of Rom in the jail is, I thought was really well really? done yeah. and really well described and you could you could see the way it was setting up it, it, I, I really enjoyed it it was good yeah i want to learn more about this character but there is something that you brought up and so did jj in the back room and i want to address that besides the little young love not old the other problem that i had with this was geo stalin's name was geo stalin geo g stalls like they, they stalin every, geos you mean stalin the geos every the one name, every, <laughs> the one name yeah. he had <laughs> Every time that's what I'm saying, like you never know what his name was because he called him, he called him like seven different things, and yeah. the same thing with every other character. Yep. Sometimes it was man, sometimes it was L. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean it, it's tough. I it's easier to read, I guess, but I could understand how that's confusing when they're calling all these characters. And there are a lot of characters in this book and a lot of characters' point of views. Mm -hmm. Stories yes. told from different points of view. It mm -hmm. kind of reminded me, I don't know if you guys have read Game of Thrones or yes. I should say the Fire and Ice novels. Right, they but they didn't do it in lot. chapters. You know how they right. did it? They kind of, because they would go back to back sometimes. Point I wouldn't view. mind if they did it. Yeah, I point wouldn't mind if they did the point of view chaptering as in like mm -hmm. you get to see through yeah. No, this was switching and, like yeah. mid-chapter sometimes. Yeah, mid -chapter. You'd, have, you'd have Rose uh, and Udi Deese's like point of view in the same chapter. So you yeah. got a little... It's like watching yeah. a tennis match a little bit back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. It was. Uh, you know what's interesting? I never read reviews of novels. And JJ, when you brought up, like, it was hard time switching between the characters. And I shouldn't have even read this. I was up north and I saw it. And they were saying that it was really good Star Wars, but they didn't have enough characters. And, man, in the first six chapters, I'm like, holy crap. Is there just very few characters that have seven different names? Or are we... I thought there was tons of characters. I was there having a hard time. Yeah, there is. Really what I were talking is like it's hard to figure out what character they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's why I was I was taking notes and I took probably the most notes in the first half of the book because I was adding down all the characters and trying to remember their names and what they were like. Now, now, with that being said, uh, you know there was only probably about forty percent new characters. The rest of them, yeah, were but but with that, you know, also as I went through earlier, they started 
flushing well, I, out some of these characters. Like they went yeah. in and they flushed out, you know, they flushed out these three, which we've all yeah, know. And, and correct yeah. me, correct it focuses me if I'm, a lot on certain people, but there's a lot of background characters. Flushed out Sorry, these cool. three. Go ahead. Correct, correct me if me. I'm wrong. When you say flushed out, do you mean detailed? Be, like yeah. explained? Because yeah. that's. Yeah. I got so much explanation and detail mm -hmm. of how each one of these people mm -hmm. looked and how each one of these people acted out of this book that I did not get in the first two. I was like, oh, that makes sense. But so, they they did yeah. it with Geo too, but I thought they did a better job. I just, I'm not saying they didn't do it. He's like a vanilla character in my opinion, where yeah. these are the backstory characters you yeah. get. But even like the minor, in like I wouldn't consider any of these three characters huge they all have uh, plot points well some plot points but are see, bigger than other ones that's the thing like i hadn't because i hadn't seen it since the last novel but i forgot porter was a character mm. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I, was porter. I was like oh new character porter oh wait no wait he was in the first novel yeah no yeah, as soon yeah. as they brought it up i was like this is dope awesome the cook's back yeah, porter's one of my uh, favorites yeah, yeah but and and even even the chancellor like we've obviously seen her before a bunch we obviously know who she is and her pets are but they really got in depth in them i thought they did a great job with that they also put a couple of uh little easter eggs and we're not gonna go through them all but they did bring up as we talked before about uh i didn't read apparently i didn't read um jj Pedro slides because yeah they have pedro serrano's planet here which is where count two who's from and his <laughs> great grandpa shows Pedro up or somebody that's related to his great uncle or something to that effect <laughs> that was kind of cool so hopefully we'll get more in on that also a little bit of a reference here um our man blobby mcblob bags the guy that's not a human being the only jedi of his thing how do we say his name or i just don't want to give away what he does he actually brings up uh the jedi exile he uses her name a couple times in the book which is pretty interesting and for those people who don't know about the jedi exile that's a character that showed up in uh, Kotor, the Old Republic too. She was the character you played in Knights of the Old Republic. Too. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic too. Uh -huh. yeah. You're here, uh, which is kind of cool. Her. She has yep. a lot of kickback. She trained a lot of Jedi and stuff like that. Um, and actually, she was like a Force ghost with. Uh, it's a, another story. Maybe we'll have Jedi. Yeah, do, that's, JJ do that's, a character. Yeah, 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 maybe we'll have a JJ do a character profile yeah. on her at one point. But. Uh, it's kind of cool because that's giving a little bit of a like when we're talking about you know yeah. Dooku having his to come up. It's same thing with the Jedi exile. It was kind of cool to see that they're actually using these these old references and giving us a little bit of something, which is real nice, quick, man. Real quick, just curious, who was everyone's favorite character in this novel? That read it. Uh, that read it. You don't have to give it to me if you didn't read it. I haven't read it whatever. yet. So go ahead, Je Solo. Go ahead. You guys know who I'm going to pick, and because and I always break the rules, and this is not really truly a character, but Bell's, Bell's Hound, Bell. man. That, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that's a good pick. Oh, I, like I, like I like his dog. dog. <laughs> I like Ty. Ty York. Uh, I say Ty. Yeah, Ty, there's a lot of really, really good characters. Ty York. I think Ty York's going to be the one they flesh out the most, and I'm, I think I'm really going to enjoy I'm really before. excited about that. I eat that. You know what? The combination. I would have to say oh, stories that I'm looking forward to the future um, would be with Ty and man, like those two mm -hmm. characters, I think yeah. whatever and bell too. I mean, I like all three of them. That's why I showed it, but like, I, I think, like bell. yeah, I really like bell, but what I think what they're going to do with Ty in her solo series and then what they're doing with the man character, where it is going to turn into almost bossish if they go that route is really okay. good. I, I just, mm -hmm. And Bell's a great character. The one kid, I guess who who I who didn't I who who I thought was probably you told me Porter. You told me we get some more Porter. I know I, I like Porter. Yeah. yeah, Porter's great, but he's it's. Right. I mean, you're only getting you know you're getting. I don't know. I don't. It's side character. That's it's side character. You know I, I would think out of the main characters, the one that I, it's not that I didn't like it, but I was like, yep, was Geo Geo Geo. Geos, Stalin, Geos. Stalin, Geos. Stalin. I say Geos. I don't really Geos, know. Yeah. yeah, that's how they pronounced it in the in the book. Because I but, at first I was like, did they mean Geode? Because we did not get <laughs> yeah, Geode the in this book. Wait, so no. like, you know, that's another point. I like. I'm probably gonna get bashed for saying this, but oh, this I kind of liked Into the Dark, the young uh, reader version or young yeah. adult version, better than I liked Light of the Jedi as a whole book. I, I agree, but I like this better than I like this better. Well, we than haven't I like read. Light of, 
we haven't read Out of the Shadow yet, so I'm kind of curious whether or not I'll like the young version of this one better than. than oh, Wave I don't two, think so. I, I there, there's, this was good. I, this is top beat. notch. Like this if if you good. get up there, this is right up with into the into the into the darkness. So, and like I said, the rereadability on this book is, I mean, tenfold. This is uh, you could. For me, I anyway, go back and listen to the audio version. Re listenability. Yeah, I can re listen to this or reread this book <laughs> solo easily three or four times How? and, and no problem. And I, I'm not saying, but by the way, I'm not saying that that Geo's character is bad. I'm just saying he is what you expect him to be. Like, yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We're like, it reminds me of Qui Gon in a way, kind of like a rule breaker or likes, dislikes certain things the Jedi do, but at the same time, very like straight. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, not, a lot kind of, of not a lot of not a lot of flair to him. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of boring. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway. I mean, he is what he was. He it was, but altogether it was good. But yeah, I do. That Thai character's got a ton of. The one thing I'll say is, there's a lot of characters here who have a ton of potential. They didn't ruin any character, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what you want to see. You want to see him. Yeah. Well, you thought in they the audio, him? they they do ruin one character, even though <laughs> yeah. the character's Rude. really good in the book. Yeah, but. Ties, you know, mom, person, uh, um, man, what's her name? Man. Oh, the lady, yeah, yeah, the lady she, in the, who book, created the nullifier. She sounds exactly like Dr. The ultimate Evil nullifier, from, from, yeah, they do. She, she sounds like Dr. Evil from, <laughs> from Austin Powers, and it, it, and I get it, they were going for like that. Well, that nasally, yeah. like high empress, yeah. you know, kind of like Ew, but you know, it was, it was Mark sneeze, Thompson, right? But it's yeah, 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 and it sounds just like Doctor Evil. Did, and, he like and, intentionally does like a different voice for he does it yeah. on the Thrawn version too. But yeah. like you'll hear all of a sudden like a character just have like like a Lucky Charms Irish accent out <laughs> 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 of nowhere. You're like, yeah. why does this guy sound like a Lucky Charms? It was just it was really weird. delicious. Yeah, it was just kind of weird because that's all you can picture is Doctor Evil while this this woman is describing all these wonderful evil things she's doing or whatever and uh, can we talk like, about hey, that man. in just general the nullifier what your guys' opinion of the nullifier is in general you mean the, the leveler no the no nullifier. not oh. hey sh don't give away the book <laughs> <laughs> no the nullifier the, the, the i don't know what you guys are talking about because one that the one lady me. created the the invention the lady created that stops all power oh uh, yeah ma'am ma dr evil yeah, Man, I was Dr. like, uh, okay. The shark with a laser on its head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> the lasers on its head. Yeah. So it, I thought it was kind of a neat invention, and I could see how it's been done before, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really has, and, and I mean, I get why. But it's been, I mean, forty years of Star Wars. You're gonna run over some stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and technically, this would be the first time. You mean timeline wise? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Don't give me that. It, technically, timeline wise, is because they write a story that happens before all the other ones. We're going they, to. It's a trap. Yeah. Where's the rabbit hole here? All right. All right. I did ask that question. Yeah. We'll break that down next week or two weeks from now when everybody gets a chance to read and listen to the book, and we'll go more into it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all in all, nullifier. All yeah. All in all, I thought it was a. Uh, it was a really good book. I hope you guys get to read it. I hope the, you know, it sounds like the, the audio version was just as good. Let's finish it off here before everybody falls asleep and go into <laughs> a, oh my gosh, I almost just shut Was it ill-tempered? Yeah. Was it ill-tempered? All right. Bad Batch it is. And hey, by the way, before we oh, start, no. uh, who was it? VK. VK, this is for you. I added a whole five extra slides this week. Yep. Like, going sure. more deaths. <laughs> Uh, it's still hard for me to pull this stuff out in time, but here we go. So we start off. We actually last week were on a planet where they, uh, you know, they weren't on the side of the Republic. They were separatists. And this time we get a, we go to um, Ryloth. Ryloth, where they are on the side of the Republic. And we turn this into a rebel thing. As you can see in the background, you've already got the the old people, the uncle who is up in arms. They you all look the happy. No, they're not happy. Yeah, yeah. Not happy at all. You get back Fatty McSenator here and <laughs> and Hera's dad looking angry but perturbed. I feel like he like in an old cartoon, like Taw's gonna be like blow on his thumb and like his face is gonna like puff out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, so okay, yeah, he gets so long later on in Rebels and stuff like that. Uh his wife just is putting the hammer down in a lot of this episode. I thought it was pretty good. It was good to actually see her, you know, like you never 
I was really going to ask that. Is this the first time we actually see Harris mm-hmm. Ball? Is this yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. so. I remember. At yes. Least. The answer is yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I was trying to remember if we had seen her briefly elsewhere. No, there was that one where everybody thought that the lady that was holding the little girl was her, but that wasn't. That's actually a different family. I think that's yeah, 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 awesome, yeah. as a matter of fact. Okay, so. cool. Mm-hmm, yep, this is the first time. And she's badass, dude. She's definitely cool. Um, so he gets out there and tries to calm everybody down and say, listen. Uh, and this is, I actually thought this was kind of cool because if you thought about this, if you were a quote unquote freedom fighter, right? Like eventually people come in and the clones did help them. You know, it helps stabilize her. These guys are saying, hey, listen, the war's over, man. Let's turn over the weapons. Let's just be cool. And we're just going to have, you know, this or that. Um, just just to clarify, so, that's that's Cham Harris' father. Cham's Harris' father, yeah. 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 And he was he was the general and Ta's the senator and they don't like each other very much. But so the people right, like Cham better. I don't think anybody likes the senator. I Go have ahead. a problem right here with this clone. Because up until this point in Bad Batch, all the clones seem like mind-controlled zombies almost since the Order mm-hmm. 66 clip. Like, you know, you must follow orders, good soldier. This guy was – they they played this clone off as almost sympathetic to the cause. Well, right? was. Well, I think was he's it? sympathetic. He's so, sympathetic to the two things. Yeah, two cool. things. He's been around the Subdulas for the whole time, right? So he was one of the troops that came in there. Yep. He's and like number their... two – guard i guess you could say number two right. they have pointed out yes they have pointed out well he was their like a uh, liaison he's stationed like, to that yeah, planet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um number two they have pointed out before that maybe not all the inhibitor chips were were working in everybody's yeah. heads yeah, yeah. Yep. so it's, it's, no cool alert. Yeah. it's the cool haircut week, it didn't work <laughs> yeah if all of a sudden he shows up with rex next week uh you know is, is, <laughs> he's got the cool hipster working. haircut so you yeah. know did i just understand that this clone is wolf no, yeah, it's you, Hauser. No. It's, not, it's Hauser. It's not Wolf. Hauser. Okay. Yeah. Which, Hauser, which Bartles and James are going to have to change something later. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe I saw. laughs> we'll get more uh, later. about everyone sounding British. The original, uh, the original background casting company for uh, the first movie was uh, was British actors, so that's why a lot of those come off British. So they've uh, kind of got that rolling through movies. But I did like that the Twi'leks were all French. I thought that was yes. Cool. Oh, yeah. Really? I noticed that. Oh, yep. Yeah, you, including how Hera all of a sudden gained an accent that has a French accent. Yeah. Like yeah, I was like, "Is Omega <laughs> off on people?" Uh, <laughs> so that speak of that, there you go. We get the kid Hera with Chopper, who's still around. So that's kind of cool because that's their it's family droid. Still, still an a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed it was to be covering. Good. Her. It was good to see the fifth best droid again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see, like, this is kind of what you guys were bringing up with uh, Hauser. He's kind of watches after the kids and everything like that. The 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 thing about oh, <laughs> every chance he gets, seriously. Sorry. The, uh, uh. the uh, geez, where the hell was I going? Oh, the thing with the senator and with Cham is that Cham did re- lead the resistance all the time. And the senator, although he was supposedly, and we had covered this when we were back covering the Bad Batch. Or not the Bad Batch when we were covering what the hell were you we reviewing before this? Was it Clone, Clone Wars? Wars? Yeah, Clone Wars. Clone Wars. We were reviewing Clone, Clone Wars as you saw that the senator was kind of making excuses, but did have the people's best interest. That's not the case anymore. As he got older, he saw Cham as a, He's a, a leader who could give him a threat. Yeah. So then he just kind of hated him and that he didn't care anymore. You, you want to know what's ironic about this? I thought as I watched it. Mm-hmm. Remember that uh it's a trap from like a month ago or three weeks ago, and we said, "Who's that person that hired the the sisters?" Oh yeah, yeah. It, it ended up being Rex, but one of the options was Champ. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was, hey, it's Champ. But I thought it was really cool that they didn't pull a um, what's his name? Uh, the guy, uh, the brother. No, the brother that's like always mad, Shaw Guerrero. I was glad that oh, they didn't yeah. pull. Oh Jesus. yeah, I was, I, it's always mad. I was Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> I was I was glad that they didn't do that with Cham, where he was always mad that they actually kind of flushed his character out too, where it was like mm-hmm. his wife is like, "Hey, bud, you can trust him, but don't like." She's the one keeping the guns in the safe, going like, "Hey, dude, you can give him some, but let's not give them all." Um, mm-hmm. Where you know they used the uncle as the the Shaw character. Um, it was touching how you got to see also to the relationship because we do know later on the relationship between Cham and Hera is at best cold, at worst, mm-hmm. like a little bit of hate there. 
Yeah. Um, I wonder if we're going to get to see what happens to her mom. And maybe that's where that comes into play, which will mm-hmm. be sad, but you know, it will be anyways. Yeah. Well, we know it's a two part episode, right? We know like, yes. last week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we do. I mean, it's gotta be, if they come back, they landed on this it's cool to see the landing on the ship. A lot of the, Pictures didn't come out good, so I couldn't use them. But Hera oh, driving and she can't after ship. It looks <laughs> almost just like it. Yeah, it's a valid point. I was gonna look at it. Looks like Boba Fett's starship. Okay, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but the landing, I did find it funny. The landing and taking off thing was kind of fun. Uh, that she got talked back to with that, and that they didn't just let her do whatever she wanted. They ended up running into the bad batch. <clears throat> the back and forth between Omega. And her, I thought it was cool. That was um, a nice. That was a nice uh, interaction. Yeah, it was kid to kid. Yeah, yeah. you're a pilot. Cool. No, 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 not yet. Do you get to fly? <laughs> no. I even like how she's that. guarding the steps, and she goes to Hunter. She goes, "I go, hey Hunter, can, can she come out or not?" Uh, yeah. And I so. think the whole interaction with Omega stopped this from being. Do you guys remember back in the '70s and the '80s, whenever they were going to do a spinoff show? They would they would basically start the show with completely characters you weren't familiar with, and you know if we didn't already know these people from Rebels, and then there's the token throw in the main characters in one right. scene, right? Yeah. But I, I think the the yeah. conversation with Omega made it go beyond that, right? It turned this episode from a cliche into. I really like the interaction with Omega and her. If that, I thought that, the, I see what you're saying. That's that's very true because otherwise you, know, you have Bad Batch just showing up. Here's your stuff. All right, we're leaving. Yeah. Well, this will. But okay, having, but this is yeah, the, the two of them can interact. Definitely, it definitely rounded out. And they had to do something. The show's called Bad Batch. They didn't have the Bad Batch on the show at all. Like, right. yeah, but I like that. I, I did kind of dig that. It was like yeah. a Clone Wars episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it they call it, call it, it, call it after Clone Wars. You can't call it Bad Batch and not have I the know, character, but title like characters ever show up. I liked show. it. Like, it wasn't just Rebels where we're only following this one crew. Like, so what you call it? Uh, uh, they used to call it a uh, bottle episode. Like when it occurs, like outside the main characters, and the main characters just like show up like casually, and then it's about all the side characters. Like it's well, yeah, there yeah, were yeah. two different, yeah, there were two different names. A bottle show meant they didn't have the budget, so they just kept it on set. But there was a name for it, JJ. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Either way, so there we go. That's the Bad Batch, and that's all they were in the actual TV show Bad Batch. It goes back, and now you kind of see that the senator just doesn't hate Cham. He also just wants to be a fat ass and live <laughs> off of people and drink and eat everything. <laughs> Hey, he's really kind of scuzzy. Uh, and you also get to start seeing... Um, hey, that's what you get when you keep your, your thingies on the front. So I miss my favorite. Like you keep them in the back. You put no, them in the front and just come back, my, apparently. I missed to mention my favorite epi- uh, joke of the episode, which was the they talked about Hera and Omega were talking about flying, and Omega's like, oh, it's a... Or Hera's like, it's a it's feeling. A feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's a and Tech at the end's like, what's a feeling? <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a what are you talking about? Which I was, I'm just hoping that they're not going to make Hera a force sensitive, uh, which they don't need to do because her kid already will be because of Kane. No, I don't, I don't think that's the point. I think it's just yeah. more of like that. Yeah. I well, heard we already know she's, she's a natural pilot. Yeah, we know she's a good pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, so they got in here. Who and knows? They're... Maybe she was raised next to a force tree. <laughs> Jesus, oh, so right. they know awesome. they, they end up eventually capturing they eventually <laughs> capture uh Hera uh and the parents and everybody else, you know, and the or the Hera and the uncle. They know they're gonna have to get it out. You see the setup coming with the senator uh too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, the pictures didn't come out good. This is about this is about the best out of the whole lot of the pictures that I had that came out of there. Doesn't um, this look like the uh, like the transport at the end of like the last X Men movie where they're just sitting in the like they're all locked up? They're just in like yeah, the, like come on, give me something a little more interesting. Yeah, I agree, Pete. They're, they've done that in so many different movies and things. But you knew Crosshair was going to be there because you kind of saw him already. Yeah, um, and then they do the pointing, the threatening. Crosshair's got him lined up. Boom to the head. I did not expect that. I didn't either. If I see the card away, I'll tell you something in a minute that might be interesting. I thought they were gonna. Um, I mean, they. I thought to the audience, they were playing with this a little bit because if you watch Rebels, you know Cham's around later. I thought it was like Crosshair is going to take out Cham. He's not the only one that's around. I was. I thought it was going to be Hera's mom. Yeah. So the senator shows up later too. Like the guy they shot in the head in cannon. Well, is around. You know what was weird. What was yes. weird is Admiral Rampart was all like, 
charge him with the attempted murder. Attempted murder, yeah. So at the yeah. end, it's an attempted murder. Attempted. While they're raiding no, him away on this thing. So yeah, uh, spoiler point. alert, he, I don't think he's dead, even though they're carting him away. Um, yeah, that's a, which heck, is of a, that's a yeah. heck of a burning hole to leave him. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Shot in the shoulder. Well, I mean, yeah. a murder. I know. Like, that's what they make. None of this makes sense. <laughs> I mean, maybe he just hit him in the ear or something. The, the he shot my Twilight. Twi Twilight's twi 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 brains are in their chest or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Leaku. Oops, he shot me in the leaky. Yeah, yeah, the, the leaky. You, yeah. you can actually cut those off. So maybe that's. I don't know. I do know this, guys. I, I if, just don't be surprised next week if he's not dead. Because well, no, they did I, charge, I if he, if he charge right. him yeah. for the murder, and he's in canon, and you don't. You know, I mean, he's fat, so you could probably just like. If that's the case, I gotta give. I gotta give. Uh, <laughs> if that's the case, I gotta give uh, Apple Rampart a little credit right. there for being deceivous. There. Well, they got him on the cart. Like they're carting him away on the cart. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, it could be that he's, like, <laughs> they take the whole he's take the whole squad to lift him. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm big dude too, so I'm like not trying to tell fat jokes. Oh my god. Like. I don't know, man. It doesn't make any sense. This none of it made sense. Attempted murder. The guy being carted away. Right. Thank you. Come on. Let's move. Let's go. Not so important. We get, so we get the little hair. Uh, well, it's going to be important next week when everybody's yelling that the guy was shot. He, he's shot not there. He's, he's still alive. useless. He's, his whole character is that he's useless. Yes, but it's useless. On. Okay. So hey, here we go. We get Hera did get. She she got. Uh, <laughs> Which also was dumb too. He literally watched her just run away and get carried away, and didn't stop her at all. And then's like, "But don't let her get far. We'll get her later. Yeah, yeah we'll get her. Yeah, later. that was kind of weird, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, I only, I, I only thing I can assume is she's inconsequential to his plan or whatever. Or the way he sees it, at least. No, we understand all this, uh, Ruben, but the guy's not dead, though. That's where we're the attempted murder. He shows back up later. Yeah. That's what we're saying, Ruben. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah cool. Hey, if you guys aren't watching, or if you're on Red Vision, you didn't see it, uh, make sure <laughs> we'll, plug, <laughs> we'll plug at the end. Check out the show that we did last Wednesday. It's got the key list here. Apparently, Jedi, or apparently JJ liked it so much, he might have bought one of these. Yeah, you might have bought one of these books. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. Uh, that's the end. It's because at the end of this slide thing is where I cut together the promo pieces. So there we go. That's the Bad Batch for this week. We can rank it real quickly. We'll start off with Mike because usually Mike has to leave first. I, yeah, I do. I'm sorry to say. No, no, go ahead. What do you got, Mike? Go, don't <laughs> I, I like I like this one. Uh, I, I did actually like this one maybe more than you guys, or at least it sounds like I liked it more than you did, Marco, because I did actually like that they used the Bad Batch as a vehicle to tell a different story. Not that I, not that I think they should do this every week. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I like having that be, be a way to tell other stories. And I like Hera's story. Um, and I want there to be more of this stuff. So, um, yeah. so to I'm me, so to me, I liked it. And I think they gave just enough bad batch, just enough Omega to make it a bad batch episode ish and tell a different story that I want to know more about. So I'm going to give this one, I think I'm going to give this one a four actually. Um, I was tied between the sort of three and a half, four, but I'm going, I'm going to go four on it. Hoping that next week, uh, is really good. Mm. That's cool. I don't know where Marco ran off to, so I'll have to pick up the reins because I'm sitting in the co-pilot seat, the second yep. seat right now. So I'm going to just follow you up and agree with you because I did like the fact that even though the Bad Batch were like a secondary you know, set of characters as a story, and maybe it was more of a Rebels you know, story where we see Hera, I kind of like that. I, I kind of like the, uh, the just peppering this kind of stuff in, I think, helps build the universe, helps us feel... Like we're not so laser set focused in on this group of like, well, we gotta get Omega because that stuff could get tired after a while. Yeah. Exactly. When we mix in yeah. stuff like this where you're like, hey, let's tell a story about a character people are familiar with, and we, you know, we can tie things together. I think it adds a lot to uh, world building and and uh, you know the whole universe we're looking at here. So I did enjoy this episode <laughs> for that. So I am also on board for the four because uh, I liked it and I like hair like. Everybody yeah. talks about Sabine, Sabine, Sabine. Let's buy Sabine. Like well, well, Hera, I like Hera too. She's a cool. I'm with character. you, man. Yeah, I she's way underrated. She's more she's Hera. Cool and badass. Yeah, I agree. Yep, I'm with you. Leaky, what do you got? Yeah, I'm. I I agree a lot with what Pete just said. I mean, I I always like the geopolitical nature of Star Wars, right? And they add that. Um, and I do like when they mine. I totally agree. It would have got really tired if it's just Omega, 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 Hide Omega, mm -hmm. and um, but. 
there's one counterpoint I want to bring up. It's something you guys told me, and I, I, I think you guys are the only ones have said this. Is there only going to be two se seasons of 16 yeah. episodes? That's yes. what I heard. Yeah. Well, because there's if only there two is, right now, yeah. Right. If there is, man, if they have it, they're not going to have many of these where they can go off onto the deeper universe stories. And, you know, that's almost a shame. I would have loved to, like, with Clone Wars, right? Like, Filoni used to do this in Clone Wars. I don't know if you guys remember that whole subplot of the, the, the water plant. And there was a giant water war and all that stuff. And I really like that stuff. But now I'm like, well, crap, there's only five episodes left. They're going to do a two-parter. It's going to be a rescue episode next week. After that, there's only a few left. So I'm like, man, is this too much sub? I don't think it is. I enjoyed this like with you, Pete. I'm just bringing this up as a counterpoint. Too many of these, and they're not going to – the main story, they're not going to have enough episodes left. Well, we don't know what they're going to do next. Yeah. They well, can I do imagine, like, the thing next. Like, we don't yeah, know what I they're going to do I imagine, too, things. that – I, I could be wrong. My theory, at least going into the next episode, is that we'll see the Bad Batch more involved because they oh, didn't yeah. capture the uncle, right? And he was the Bad Batch's contact through Sid or whatever. Yeah, yep, yeah. So I imagine. Wait, so wait, wait. see him again. But... David, for your review, what do you got, Leaky? What's your score? Four. Oh, yeah. Four. All right. We Jedi. got another four. <laughs> the uncle's captured. I do think. Yeah, yeah. I do think. Um, wait, this Jedi. Jedi's going. Go ahead. I was oh. commenting on something I heard. Um, so, yeah, initially I was going to mark this pretty low. Uh, but uh, the more I thought about it, just because I didn't, you know. Come on. Come on, board. Hang on. Hang on. The name of the show <laughs> is Bad Batch, right? And they were barely in it. So initially I was going to mark it low. And then I started uh, just kind of giving it some thought uh, about how this kind of ties in the Bad Batch to the bigger picture, uh, so to speak, uh, it gives them a a tie in to the rebellion uh, through the uncle and supplying. Do they, you know, will they become more um, involved in the rebellion, or will they simply be a support element through uh, through Sid or whatever? Uh, and then, of course, the friendship, which has already been, you know, we've we've, we've seen the genesis, I guess, maybe of a sprint a friendship between. Omega and Hera, and everyone's always looking down the road trying to speculate what's going to become Omo Omega. You know, maybe this gives some insight into that, or maybe not. Maybe it's just a, a you know, nothing. And one thing I will say as someone, one of the few books I read was uh, <laughs> Lord of the Sith, Sith, uh, which is basically Vader and Cham kind of uh, going head to head, sort of. Uh, but I've always wondered as I was reading that, and and you know I know you guys say he was in Rebels, but I don't always remember that kind of you know I only watch it once and then I don't go back and and watch it again usually. But I always kind of wondered what got Cham involved in the rebellion. So I think maybe we're kind of seeing that unfold before, uh, before us right now. Is you know Hera yeah. kind of got Cham yeah. involved in the rebellion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one one question I did have though, and I'll uh, my my three and a half is what I'm going to end up giving this thing. Okay. Um, but uh, I did have a question for, I guess, Marco or whoever else has read uh, Lord of the Sith, because one of my favorite characters in that book was Cham's number two, uh, the female Twi'lek that went and did, you know, some like, you know, beat up people in the dark alleys of uh, she, <laughs> she had a reason. She had her reasons, but was she was she one of the uh, Twi'leks in this show? Was so she the one the one that told. Hera that took over for driving up and down. I think that's who that is. Okay, the pilot. Yeah, the pilot. I liked her yeah. in the book, uh, cool. and I won't. I won't say. Uh, I won't go into the book in case anyone wants to read it. It's, uh, she's she's a real cool character in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm under the impression that that's who that was. Three and a half. Three and a half. Pete, three and half. All right, JJ, hit us with it. Now you can uh, pull back that curtain, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> well, I already did. So no, I won't go too in depth to it. I, I'm I'm gonna give it three and a half also. Um, the only thing, so I kind of agree with what Leaky said and that, you know, is I'm a little cautious as to whether or not the two part episode is going to just kind of waste time in kind of a spinoff story, but it, it still, it was really interesting to see it come back. Mind you, this is the second time we've come back to rebels characters and bad batch already in what 11 episodes. <laughs> so, cause we had Kanan 
in the first one mm-hmm. is Caleb. Yeah, that's true. But, true. Yeah. but yeah, but I, you know, I, I've got my concerns about that. But like I said, I think they'll be a little bit more involved in the second episode. It's kind of like the rescue operation, the actual Bad Batch will. Um, but I, I always like to kind of see the Bad Batch's story further along more so than kind of a side story. But it's still, it's fun for what it is. And they did it well, and it's good to see it call back and not get like a ton of like retcon talk and other stuff in there. So uh, I think it worked out well. And it's nice to see, like you guys said earlier, too, Hera's backstory because we don't get a lot on Hera, to be quite honest. And yeah. I think she's a great character. So, hey, exactly. JJ, one question for you. Except for what, the whole like, novel. Um, we're, we're, were yeah. you like the <laughs> only reason I got distracted by, hey, we're not going to get off Bad Batch storyline is because of when I, when you guys told me there's only going to be two seasons and there's only going to be 30. If there was, if I knew it was an unlimited series and they were going to have to tread water a little bit, that's where I love adding the geopolitical stuff. But I felt like a ticking clock. You know what I mean? If there's yeah. only 16 episodes and there's only going to be two seasons, well, that's I'm, the only reason I was worried about them not focusing on Bad Batch. Yeah. yeah. And I, to me, I'm worried for a similar reason, but more to me, it's worried. Like I want to see resolutions to certain storylines, hopefully just by the end of the first season. Right. Like, I don't want to have to wait through two seasons to see the end of a resolution to like cross your storyline. Yes. Yes. So. I so think we might catch it. What end. was your final grade, JJ? Three and, Three and a half. half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. I'll go last. Marco. Well, big, first off, good to see big Nosh. Make sure you check him out uh, at Nash Heed on uh, the YouTubes. He's got some great things there. And you can go back and watch this. This week, the joke thing that uh, Jedi did was on ships. So feel free to watch that segment again. Um, it's been canceled. So it's awesome. <laughs> all, the good, all the good stuff gets canceled. I snuck a pretty good one in there earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did, you did. You and make sure you guys are down there checking out the links of the people below. I think we got something from TY this week. He went on a little bit of a a two-part hunt. So check that the links down below the description. Oh, Obviously yeah. the Taka show, the totally cool, awesomest show ever uh, that me and Pete do <laughs> the uh, Wednesday it, link below. And so is leaky stuff is linked below too. So feel free. And I think Gonzo has something there too. So the whole family, all of us together, we've all got a show down there. You can look at, okay. <clears throat> I'm if, if it wasn't for the Omega uh, hair up back and forth there, and the actual scenes that we showed none of the fighting at nighttime because I couldn't get them to render good <laughs> enough. Uh, I would give this a two, but uh, since those parts were part of the show, I'm going to actually give it a three. I'm not quite as worried about the two part backstory of it. I do like that. I think they drew this out a little bit too much. Okay, like that's where the issue yeah. gets into play. And as far as you saying there's not enough backstory line in Hera, I'm exactly at the complete opposite. No. They gave a whole novel of her. Yeah, and, but that's yeah, a novel. Not everybody it's a reads big ass the novel, novel too. <laughs> big ass read novel. Books. But that's not that's not like a, a, a animated series or a, or a, yeah. a comic. I mean, visually, or a, I mean that's a novel. Yeah. Novel. There's no yeah, visual. You can't expect to fans of a cartoon to read it. I, hey, I shot at I read Walmart, that. Novel, all right, but still, <laughs> <laughs> it's a cartoon, man. You can't I mean, it's, 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 it's not a small visuals. book either. By the way, it's not. It's new dog. No, it's huge. normal. So yeah, it's, it's actually the words. Yeah, it was the first canon novel, I think, or the new canon. It wasn't like canon or canon? No, no, first or second, second but it was yeah, very early was, canon it novel. Was very early, yeah, early on. Canon novel about canon. Canon about canon. <laughs> canon and and about Hera canon. actually, it's how they met. Like it yep. is literally how it's they met, story. which is kind of cool. Um, I do want to. I do hope this is really sick, but I do hope that I see how her mom dies and why it causes a rift. And if they can do that in two episodes, fine. I actually like that they got away from the bounty hunting thing too. They're still kind of doing the background, but we don't have to see Sid everything. It's not turning into like er, let's cash in our chip, let's see how much we owe you. Let's. This is a good way of doing it. And Are a we good sure way- this is two? And not three? Because remember, Ryloth in Clone Wars was wasn't it three? Yeah, it it could, I thought three. it was two, but it could be. Three. I, I hope it's two. That's why. Um, One yeah, thing I had a question five. on. I don't know if anybody else. No, it's just, so they're supposed to be out from under Sid, but on that supply run, they said they were doing it for Sid. Yeah. No, yeah, but they're out from under Sid, but they're still working to make they're money. Still working to make money. money. Yeah. So, okay. But now they get to choose. They were choosing to help out the rebel. You could hear it kind of like. So they choose hey. to fly all that way just to try just yeah, to, make poor record, to make poor wrecker carry all the weapons. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if that. Yeah, like, but nobody I, else helped. But as you can see, they were kind of doing it like, okay, we're going to help the rebels. Like 
that's kind of what I caught out of it was they're now going to choose their jobs, so we're not going to see any more. They might have have known Rampart was there, and they're like, stick it. Crawling in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So Craw- you gave it, what was it, Marco? A five I, didn't, and a half? I didn't even get to halfway through what I was going to say, but sorry. Again, I think if it's two, I'm okay with it. If it turns into three, I'm going to have an issue. Um, I, but I'm giving it three, three helmets because I think that's probably where it was. Like, it, got it. it's good. There's a little bit of like, it doesn't advance any of the storyline at all. We do get a little bit of callback. I thought it, the accent did throw me off with Hera. I, you just don't need to do yeah. it. Like, that just don't do it. Uh, it was weird. Um, what? You don't think it was weird, Pete? It was weird. No, I'm saying, well, she's a kid. You can. It was weird, dude. So <laughs> just have a and then like. <laughs> but yeah, why, 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 why does she have an accent? She grew up on this planet. Everybody else talks like yeah. that. Yeah. Everyone I else thought for sure. Yeah. I thought for sure. Everybody Margo else is Cajun man. Points. Why is there? She yeah. so we, have Cajun to, man. we have to. We have to make it so realistic because it's a cartoon about that. Like, oh. Everything else got to be a point. Like oh. Omega's got some weird accent that's not like everybody else's. Not every other clone talks like her, but she talks different, even though they're from the same planet and that's they're her, from the same. That's her bad bat defect. Is the weird. She accent. was hanging out with the you know the the, the long necks or whatever they're called. Hey, Mark, that's not their question, accent. Uh, I had a question the for you. Same about story voice actress. Oh. Would you want the same it. voice actress doing it and doing it that did it in Rebels? Because yes, people got absolutely. very upset. They did. Well, people got yeah. people got upset when Freddie Prince did it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's because people. That's because yeah. Freddie Prince got drunk one time and thought he was a Star Wars fan <laughs> and tried to lecture people on what you know Star what? Wars fans were. I, I, which is no idea. Being drunk and Star Wars fan, he's a forty year old man trying to talk like a you know twelve year old. That's the kid. thing. Like, like yeah. I don't have a problem with it being different. I don't have a problem with it being different, but why French? Accent, yeah. No, I think, like... no, I think, I think the different, I, I think hidden in the Freddie Prince Jr. thing, and we can get to some other time is when you get drunk and you go on a podcast with your friends, you can expect hate mail. But uh... if you tell people uh, that they're wrong, I don't get hate mail and they don't know anything, expect hate mail. And when they send Real... you the hate mail, just wallow in it. That's the hate fine. Mail. Real but quick, before we. That. Okay. Before we unleash solo on this, real quick, I gotta ask why Marco didn't deduct points for the speeder bike jousting, like we saw <laughs> Clone Wars. Dude, and you're on in my stick, man. <laughs> oh, that's, once again, I said, <laughs> "Kill me, Holmes." I had him all night for this. Did, 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 you you how, did, that ahead of time. did you Sorry. did you hear how I had it down to a two because of that? Like that was some of the you crap. You didn't say because of that. Well, I said the other crap. That was uh, self That was the crap. The crap. Oh, yeah, okay. it was oh, sorry, right. solo. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that, that jousting stuff is good. No. So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna blow y'all away. Let me finish before y'all grumble and groan and and jump on my bandwagon here. Not going to jump on this. Bandwagon. I am going to give it a four and a half. <laughs> wow, Dang. we can't let him right. review anything anymore, dude. All right, just now, now stupid. hear me out. There was no. a lot of, there was a lot of fault, like the accent stuff that did kind of ruffle my feathers a little bit. And I was like, well, that's kind of dumb. And I wish they hadn't have done that. But I really liked the way that they played out a lot of little Easter egg things that I don't think we saw or noticed that they were Easter eggs yet. And I mean, let's face it. This is Rebels Clone Batch. That's what I'm going to title this one as Rebels Clone Batch. <laughs> Greatest episode of rebels clone batch ever i think (laughs) that later down the road possibly into the next season this episode is going to have more meaning than what we see right now and that's why a big part of it being a high ranking that i gave it is that i think somewhere in the middle of next season or beginning of next season we're going to look back on this episode and go oh man I see what they were doing. This makes a whole bunch more sense. They were setting it up, and and they're going to give us a lot of the death of Hera's mom. They're going to give us, oh, hey, look, all of a sudden Hera, you know, had to go do this and find Ezra and find Sabine, and and I think they're going to tie maybe a little bit in or nope, try cause, to explain. No, because they already have a novel story. that we know how it happens, and that's not how that yeah, happens. Right. right, but I'm saying you your novel. They're going to do it visually you're, through, you're through some of this, and they're going to give us some of those highlights. And I think they're going to help maybe touch into that and give us some more of those little clips that they may be not even put in the novel, but just little clips and edits. And so I think this is going to be a very important issue, if you, you want to call it, episode to come. 
And I really liked the way that they brought Hera in. I really liked the Dr. Afra-esque ship. I really liked the way that, I mean, when I saw Hera and Omega start talking, my brain started working. It was like, oh, okay, so we've seen Rebels and all that. Now we're introduced. What had happened? What was the more? Is there more interaction between Omega and Hera down the road? Or, you know, Kanan and Omega? Or what's, what else is in there? And I started thinking more and more and more. And, you know, so I really enjoyed that. That was kind of fun. I think this episode is going to mean a whole lot more down the road. Four and a half. Well, I don't, oh, you had a really Jedi that ran off in the woods that they told me about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so solo, I have a question for you because I, I totally agree with everything you said. I I I take a little umbrage with when somebody says this didn't advance the storyline forward because is this really a story about the Bad Batch or is this a story of the era of the Empire starting and the Rebellion starting, right? I think it advanced that story, the story of the era, right? Mm -hmm. This this brand new era starting off. The Bad Batch. I mean, let's face it, the clones have a limited life left. Yeah. And so the rest of this is going to be leading into the story. So I kind of, I totally agree with you. Is that a record rating? It, it might be for, for me. I think it might be for, for a filler episode. That's what I mean. Episode, I mean, this. This is the most ridiculous stuff I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ruben, it. I like Ruben it. Says it's a trap. So, and, and I could be wrong. <laughs> we could come into the beginning of next season, and I could be a hundred percent totally wrong. Ezra, and have to Ezra's go still pooping his diapers. Yeah. At this point, he's still but, pooping his diapers. Well, but I didn't know this season. is a two-part episode. Personally, I didn't know we were getting a, a follow-up. I didn't know until I watched get, it. Yeah. Hopefully, I, I mean, I'm kind of hoping we don't get Harris' mom getting off in the next episode because then yeah, it kind of speeds through things. It but, might be yeah. too quick, yeah, right? right. No. Right. Otherwise, I was with Solo on the idea of like, yeah, it's laying groundwork for stuff we'll see later. Yeah. So next season, maybe we Way see Harris' water. mom. <laughs> is that, <laughs> is that on this planet? Still hasn't been occupied by the Empire. <laughs> we so, know this is all true. We already know where all these things that have happened. I don't so, know where these are going. I'm I didn't hoping. read that book because I don't read them reading books. I haven't read that novel yet. I do read the Those books, but I have words. not read that novel yet. Put too many words, no not pictures. Words. I can't. No, no, I mean, some of that some of, no, but some of that we actually know from from Rebels. Like, we know mm. some of this from Rebels. We and some of it's from the book. Like Ezra's li literally in diapers at this point. Sure. I get what you're saying. Oh, yeah, no, no, we don't need to see Ezra. We don't, but, we don't but, need to but, see Ezra. But but once again, this is supposed to be based on this episode, not the hope of what it could be further down the line. And, and as far as this yeah, episode, but on the episode, I liked hey. where the episode went, but the episode you wasn't would, about the Bad Batch. You you know, that's not how Solo raked it. He raked that a real what trap thing have. thrown in there. Don't forget about Ezra's parents. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt. Well, we could. We might saying. be able to see. Yeah, no. If not. they're going around, I like what Leaky said. I this is the one part I do like about it. I do think that it's this Bad Batch is not really about the Bad Batch. I think it's about the Empire coming in and showing from a different point of view because that's how we've always talked about them using for it. I like that they brought in a little bit of the hair story, which will be cool. Yeah. I also don't want this to turn into Rebels 6.0. Like, I'd rather just have us have a pre Rebel show and a post Rebel show, to be honest. Well, with I you. think this is the opposite of the Rebels, you know, you know, whatever six point, whatever you're, you're saying, because the Re Rebels, when you watch Rebels, it's all about Rebels. Like, we don't, we don't get episodes where it isn't about Hera, Kanan, you know, Ezra, or Sabi. Right. Like, we don't get episodes about like anybody else in the universe. Clone Wars did that, where we can get side episodes. Like, you know what? We're gonna see what Mace Windows is up to this week. Mm -hmm. Or hey, yeah. you know what? We're gonna look at what Obi Wan and uh, you know what they're doing. They didn't and do that in Rebels. Rebels was just about Rebels. No, 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 no. I understand that, but what I'm saying is like spin up. Like I would like to see the spin up. Like I want to see. Like K we know Kanan and Hera have a kid, and it's not a it's not a Yoda species. Like I actually kind of want to <laughs> well, see that. You know, I'd like to true. see. I'd like to see the prequel, maybe in flashbacks, about even parts of the book or stuff that happened after this. And I obviously, because of my review, want to know what happened to Hera's mom. But what I don't want them to do is start rewriting history. Like, I don't want to see all of a sudden Ezra in diapers, because there's no reason to. No, like, we're not going to see Ezra in diapers. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, there's no I reason. I'm bringing Ezra into this. 
There oh, he did. Of, Solo did. That was Solo's I did. I, was, I just was yeah. giving an example. I didn't know they were going to take it so damn seriously. I was like at the end. He, that was <laughs> like, the end. Like, like, we might see something next season where all of a sudden we see more of those characters from Rebels no, with Hera. I'd rather just have Or the uh, Ghost. Or in, just in have, a small episode. I'd rather just have them. Well, we we're probably going to see the Ghost. But I'd rather just have them do give us another season. You know what we I mean? Like, see, yeah. Yeah. We could well, see I, Zeb Ware on 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 what's it called? Like with his grandma hitting him over the head. Well, and it was nice to see Hera's dad carrying uh the rifle just like Boba Fett's rifle. Or I'm sorry, uh Mandalorian's rifle, the early Boba Fett. Well, um, we do have to see where you know her dad does get so you know where they get in a fight. It disillusioned be- where he yeah. goes from being Hey, I, yeah, I was a freedom fighter, but we gotta we gotta try to work with these guys. We gotta try to get no. At cool. the end, when when as soon as they captured his daughter, you yep. saw that shit. He's like, it's over. Yeah. There ain't no love yeah. for the Empire anymore. No, there may have no love for Empire, but don't forget when he ran into Hera in Rebels, he had no love for Hera either. So we right. have to see what caused that rift as well. And yeah. there was Speed mom dying. I'm assuming jousting, speeder bike jousting. Also stupid. That's better um, than a boba bump. That's a full point, man. That is that is <laughs> better speeder. than a boba. Yeah, you it just, is. You just speeder Jedi. bike jousting. Bump. Yeah, Bubba just hey Jedi used to just give me that look all the time. Now you hey, he used to thought you were on the old man club with him. We tell terrible jokes, everything's all good. Now, did you see that look he just gave you about the boba bump thing? Good. Yeah. Speeder yeah. bike jousting. No. It's my He's new going bump. From old to see on that one. <laughs> Speeder bike <laughs> jousting. Hey, I got a I got a semi-serious question for you guys that I've been noticing a trend in the Disney Plus shows that worries me a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it started with that when you guys said this is only gonna be two seasons, 16 episodes. And, you know, I was more of a, I like Clone Wars better than Rebels for the very thing Pete said. Clone Wars was able to flesh out a ton of stuff because they had 26 episodes that went on forever, you know, and I'm worried that, you know, they're going to start compartmentalizing the Star Wars shows, right? Like you're only going to get a couple of seasons of each thing and you're going to lose some of that flavor. But, and I, and I get why they're doing it. It's like, there's a lot of filler in Clone Wars, you know, like, but and it's like you, like Pete, you said, it's like, oh, one week we're going to visit Mace Window, another week. And then you can go weeks and weeks and weeks without seeing some of the main characters. Is I mean, but I'm a little nervous. Like, I think they're going to do both. Book of Boba Fett and other things that they're not going to give these shows a chance to breathe. It's going to be boom, 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 boom. And, you know, that's why I was like, when I saw this yesterday and they did this episode and it was not the Bad Batch, it was, it was more backstory about that era with Hera's parents. But now I'm like, there could be a one and done. This is it. This is all we're going to get of, of Hera and her dad. We're never going to see him again. The show will be over, and we'll never find out what happened to Hera's mom or, you know. No, no. I mean, now how much how much stuff they're putting out. They are literally filling in. I don't believe that's true. I think the only problem that you have is, like, the, the Darth Revan problem, right? When does he show up? Well, 15 years from now because they have to finish all this crap before they can get to them. I think they're going to still keep doing these general, you're going to have your general oversight shows and you're going to keep doing them like the Mandalorian, like bad batch. And then you're going to have your place keepers, your book of fets, your whatever the next, like the acolyte show that they're going to have coming out. All these little ones where it's going to touch on little things because they need, they need the line anyways. They need the streamlines and then they're going to come back to do the movie. Depending on how movies are doing in theaters, they're going to come back and do the movies in theaters. So like, I think you're going to get it all. I think we're just worried because of what happened in the past when Star Wars disappeared for a while. Mm -hmm. I think that like, that's not going to happen. We're not going to get that anymore. And I think they've proven that because think about this, like book of Fett, we don't even know when the next Mando is coming out at this point, do we? Because technically, we thought it would be coming back to back. With- I think it's technically there. I think they're from what I heard is they were hoping for the spring. So Book of Fett will be, you know, December. There's, and then there's a guy, right the guy who's the stunt double for uh, for Boba and for some other people there is back to back now shooting both. They're finishing up the Book of Fett, which he just did. And I, mean. Mando too. I know, but it's like so crazy because I think they were originally planning on putting it back to back. But now they've got so much material that's working out pretty well. That I think they're just it's just gonna be continuous. You know how the Marvel universe now is continuous, even though they're only doing six to eight episodes. I think the same thing's gonna happen with Star Wars. So you gotta well, think I'm, I'm just figuring it also off of like Sasha Banks. Like she's been off on you know WWE for a couple of months now. She's, she's not good could, at wrestling. But 
No, I'm not saying how. Well, we won't get into that. <laughs> but what we will say is she has been off of that wrestling, and she could potentially have been doing filming for Mando. Is if, off she, if she's part of the NWO, then she'd still be on, but she's not, so we're gonna get rid of it. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, but that's it. Uh. I I think it's good. I I, I really do like what they're doing, and plus they got to throw High Republic stuff in there too. Honestly, after this novel, I was kind of down because of what Scott had been doing on um on the main title of the book and just thinking like, uh, but after this last novel, I'm like, okay, give us something now visual, like for the people that, that can't read or, yeah. you know, what I mean, just, I get <laughs> it. People can't people. read. Walmart, Walmart. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't mean like that. Like, no, 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 no. Sorry. sorry. A lot of literacy commentary. No, 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 no. Let me take that back because that actually that wasn't nice. What I'm saying is like, what in my head I was thinking about people who like when they start reading books like that they fall, you know, like they'll read like you know ten pages. I will put myself in the category of the people who can't read because I just don't have the time to read a book because I I will admit I'm a slow reader. If I'm actually sitting and reading a book, I have a very hard time focusing. Like I have a very hard time focusing on words and I'm like, oh, yeah, what? Oh. I mean, I always knock it, but like I it's uh, I'm just oh, joking what? around. Ooh. Like it yeah. just it takes me less time to read than it would for me to do an audio. Well that's it why takes, I do the audio. It audio takes me a, sit and listen. Yeah. It takes me a long time to read through a novel really anymore. I mean it does. Same. I only I only sped read through this one because somebody kept making me do it. <laughs> hey, <look at> this. <laughs> this kind of makes me sad. Wait, we got two thumbs down. I didn't even know that. Every week, like, hey, every week. Let me know. We got two thumbs down. Yeah, every week. Good. Then they're watching. Oh, it's all right. I don't care about thumbs down, but tell me why you put a thumbs down. If you have a oh, critique man, or a criticism, it's let me know what jealousy. it is. Really yeah, I can't do anything about something if you just go in and like it. Tell very me jealousy. why. We do have a chat. You're you're free to comment in the chat if you don't like something or think something's wrong. Or... See, in a Lego show, it's really easy. I get thumbs down when I don't Ooh, build like... some Legos on the show. They just <laughs> like you didn't build Legos. <laughs> hey, I really like that last one with the uh, what you guys do in Jabba's Palace with the torture droids. That was oh, the really droids. Cool. Yeah, real cool. Real cool. Make sure you're checking out League Tuber stuff over there on Low Bricks. All right. Uh, the you know, I think that's probably going to be it because we were supposed to be an hour long. Like we said, we we have three hours worth of content. An next hour week, long, two yeah, and we're gonna try to keep it at two hours. So, like now, next week we're gonna put in more stuff. We'll do visions next week. I know you guys are all screaming for that, so we'll cover that. I think we all already have the slide. Do we already have the slides done for that, JJ? Or we need to get on? Uh, partially, yeah. I didn't polish them off or anything yet. But. Polish them off. We have used a lot of innuendos <laughs> this week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> bounty hunters. What's that? Are we gonna do oh, bounty hunters? That's right. What in the hell we got to do? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, next week. We yep. still got so much stuff to do. We have to finish off that too. We've got yeah, a new segment coming out that you guys might, might be interested in. Uh, we won't mention it because sometimes stuff gets out, but I think we'll be happy. It was great, guys. We had a good one. Oh, we have to further review the novel too, I guess maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll do the mini novel. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you for everybody in the chat. We do appreciate it. Um, guys, we're out. Oh.